done in West Virginia. Well, Don Nealon came into West Virginia, and right from the start, he's turned that program around. He's been to four bowls. He's very disappointed they're not going this year. Well, as you look at the Mountaineer program under Coach Nealon, let's take a closer look now at Don Nealon at West Virginia. In 1980, Don Nealon took over a West Virginia football program that had won only 17 games the previous four years. In only his second season, Nealon took West Virginia to the Peach Bowl. The Mountaineers field general back then was Oliver Luck, and to this day, Luck holds every West Virginia passing record. Their offense was complemented by an unforgiving defense. Together, the two groups combined for a 26-6 upset win against Florida. And in the winner's locker room, Don Nealon and his troops were able to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Following in Luck's footsteps was Jeff Hostetler, who transferred to West Virginia after two years at Penn State. And in his two seasons as a Mountaineer, Hostetler threw for over 4,000 yards and 26 touchdowns. Then in 83, Hostetler scored the winning touchdown in the Mountaineers' first victory over Pitt since 1975. The Panthers had been had, but there still roamed a Nittany Lion that had to be conquered, too. And on October 27, 1984, the Mountaineers would try to defeat Penn State for the first time in a long time. Just how long, you ask? Well, our Jim Simpson broadcast the game, and he put it in perspective. The last time West Virginia won, a factory worker with two children and a wife took home after taxes $72.50. The last time West Virginia won, well, you could get a used car for about $400. Coffee for 79 cents a pound, and porterhouse steak for 89 cents a pound. This is a crusade for the Mountaineers. On this evening, that dream would finally become a reality. 29-year-old drop would finally end. Schaefer back. Schaefer, it is intercepted by Holly. Down the sideline. Run out his feet and out of bounds. That should do it. It was, of course, a victory for the entire team, but was also a victory for the entire state of West Virginia and its people. Together, they shared the joy of winning. Well, let's get to a couple of big keys for tonight's game. First off, down in the trenches, a couple of All-Americans doing battle head-to-head, -head, and they'll answer the question, where's the beef? Well, if you like your football and you like it in the trenches, we've got a great game. All-Americans, both of them, Brian Josmiak, the offensive tackle from West Virginia, defensive tackle Tim Green from Syracuse, both tremendous athletes, both Outland Award candidates. This is going to be a battle all night between these two. And on the offensive side for the Orangemen of Syracuse, we've talked about what a job young Donnie McPherson has done, leading them to six victories in seven tries since taking over the starting quarterbacking choice. But what do the Mountaineers have to do to shut him down? Well, the Mountaineers are going to have to blitz McPherson, and I think what they'll end up doing is they're going to have to assign one of their defensive backs to follow McPherson all night. If they pressure him in the, in the pocket, McPherson's gone, so they're going to have to have a guy on him all this evening. From McPherson, the player, to McPherson, the coach, Dick McPherson of the Syracuse Orangemen, very happy with his defense, too. Well, West Virginia is known for their defense. Dick McPherson says he'll match his defensive line with any school in the country. All right, so it's coming up now, the kickoff, the Syracuse Orangemen and the West Virginia Mountaineers. The Mountaineers have been snubbed by the Aloha Bowl, but bowl bound, going to the Cherry Bowl, the Syracuse Orangemen. So we're having the toss of the coin out at midfield, and it'll be, well, we'll do it again. The toss of the coin, and it looks like the Mountaineers of West Virginia have won the toss, and they've elected to receive. The Orangemen will do the kicking off. Of course, weather is usually a factor here in Syracuse, but we are indoors. Let's check what things are like outside. Mostly cloudy skies, about 36 degrees at game time. A light breeze out of the east at just seven miles per hour and a chance of rain slash snow. That would be freezing rain. But indoors, no chance of any precipitation, no chance of wind. It's a very crisp 55 degrees, but not quite as cold as it is where Paul McGuire and Jim Simpson are standing by. And we'll have updates, of course, on Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. There is Don Nealon in his sixth year, head coach of the Mountaineers of West Virginia. And he has led the Mountaineers to four successive bowl bids. Blue Bonnet, the Hall of Fame, the Gator, and the Peach. The Aloha said thanks, but no thanks this year, despite their 6-3 and 1 record. So they're in a position to salvage their season. And of course, recruiting so very important when you're competing with the likes of Pittsburgh, Syracuse, and 
West Virginia. There across the way is Dick McPherson, the head coach in his fifth season as the head mentor of the Syracuse Orangemen. So we're just about set to kick it off, and from the 40-yard line, there is the youngster, Tim Vessling. Now, uh, there's an interesting story because Vessling really has taken over the kickoff chores from the veteran McCauley. McCauley, not too happy about that, David Hum. McCauley, he's such a competitor. He wants to be out in the field all the time. And uh, Coach McPherson told us when he put Vessling in, McCauley was just furious. But Vessling, he said, let's get the kids some experience, and he's come on and kicked real well. So there is Vessling, who will spot at hash mark near side. Tony Johnson, number 16, is back deep for the Mountaineers. He averages almost 19 yards per kickoff return. And you look from the end zone camera, we're underway in Syracuse. It is high, it is end over end, and it is almost out of the end zone. Nine yards deep, so it'll be West Virginia's ball, first and ten from their own 20-yard line. West Virginia on offense, the Mountaineers, sparked by the 206-yard rushing performance of Undra Johnson against Temple. They continue to gain momentum. Johnson carried the ball 35 times. That tied the West Virginia record set by Eddie Williams back in 1969. And there is the young quarterback, Mike Timko. Two interceptions, three touchdowns on the year out of Euclid, Ohio. Kevin Koken opens up at the center spot, the freshman out of Youngstown, Ohio. The guards, John Barton, number 63, out of Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Gary Pounds from Canton, Ohio, is on the other side. The backs are in the eye pro set. Gay, along with Tom Gray, motion across by number one. And that is Granis Bell, a dive play right over the middle. Kevin Koken, the Youngstown, Ohio, 6'3", 250 freshman center doing the blocking for Tommy Gray, who is most of that West Virginia offensive attack. The Orangemen of Syracuse, allowing just under 100 yards rushing, third best in the nation. They have a number of stats in the NCAA top 10 category. Most of them are offensively oriented. They are tied for 20th in scoring defense. A pickup of two yards. It's second down and eight for West Virginia. There goes Gray the other side. First down and more across the 35 up to the 36-yard line goes Tommy Gray. He's a senior, 6'1", 179 pounds. And it is a first down for West Virginia. Tom Gray does a good job of running and picking his holes here. He gets outside. It's an option run. He breaks outside, gets up the field, and breaks some tackles. Makes a great run before Ingram comes over. Mangram has to make the tackle. The ball at the 36-yard line of the Mountaineers. Wide receivers are split left and right. The backs are evened up. Gay and Gray dive to the fullback. The senior out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Loose football covered by the Mountaineers up near the 47-yard line. Post to first down yardage again. Cooper Gardner, the freshman out of West Haven, Connecticut, in there on the tackle defensively for the Orangemen. Don Nealon has to be very happy with his running game against a very tough Syracuse defense. Line of scrimmage just across the 47-yard line. It's first and 10 for the Mountaineers. Impressive opening drive. Motion across by Calvin Phillips. Play action fake, and Gray gets chopped down behind the line of scrimmage. That penetrating Orangemen defense. Rudy Reed, 35, the senior out of Mansfield, Ohio, David, the first to get there. Rudy Reed, he's made a tremendous amount of tackles all during his career. Here the first time the Mountaineers run away from Joe's react, and you see that they don't have the success that they have running to their left. Spot the ball just across the 46-yard line. Grant is Bell, number one, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, deployed wide to the left side. Phillips, near side, first pass. Timko unloads out of the backfield, got his man out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Syracuse goes Tommy Gray. Gray bumped out by the inside linebacker Rudy Reed out of Mansfield, Ohio. Don Nealon says the one thing Timko does is he wins. Here he's moving the sticks, moves the ball, good throw to Gray. Watch Rudy Reed look downfield, looks for a block, gives Gray a chance to get him a couple more yards. Rudy Reed, they call Steady Eddie over on the Orangemen sideline. He runs their whole defensive scheme of things along with defensive captain Timmy backpedaling. There goes Tom Gray. Big hole left side. First down and more. Inside the 35. Marcus Paul came up from the safety spot to make the tackle. Watch the block by 77, Joswiak. Watch the right of your screen, the, the block that Joswiak gets on Tim Green. Tom Gray, open field, comes back. Marcus Paul has to pull him down from behind. 
Watching the block there by 77. He just buries him. Joe's way out does. First and 10. Inside handoff. Gay. Hammers keeps the knees turning down inside the 25. Wait well, you know, up. Don Shula, the head coach of the Dolphins, says the best way to take a home crowd out of a football game is with a long, sustained scoring drive, and that's what Don Nealon's troops are doing here. West Virginia's doing that for sure. There again, the, the cutback. Joe Zwiak had such a good block on Green that it opened up the hole on the backside. A concerned Dick McPherson over on the Orange Men's sideline, spotted at the 25-yard line. Hollifield wide to the left side. Dive over the left by Hollifield, and Hollifield behind the blocking of Joe Zwiak. Hammers down to about the 20-yard line. Both coaches talking to them in practice the other day, David, a little bit concerned about a somewhat porous defense. Well, West Virginia, their defense, they came into the season with 10 starters returning and 16 players that had played one time or another last year. They're kind of disappointed that they haven't stopped people when they needed to. So that's one thing that I know Don Nealon wants his defense to do tonight. 39 checks into the lineup now for the Mountaineers. That is Chris Peckin out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania, junior 6'1", 216 pounds. And Timko has to take a timeout. The players late getting out. So the opening drive stalled by a momentary mistake. There's no score. Syracuse has yet to see the football. The first rookie ever prize brought to you by Burdick Automobile Dealers. The winner gets the professional football. Please turn to the WSYR radio money number five on page 25 in your game program. We're not a company. 11.44 left to go in this first quarter. The Mountaineers taking the opening kickoff. It was rammed nine yards down their throats deep in the end zone. They started at their own 20. They've gone 58 yards so far. Hollifield, big hole. First down at the 12. Marcus Paul came up from his safety spot to make the touchdown saving tackle and watch number 77 out of Cannonsville, Maryland. Brian Joswiak. Brian Joswiak, a tremendous athlete, six foot six, 290 pounds, opens a tremendous hole, a big play on third down. I think they get it down inside the five. There's any question what direction they'll run? I think it's very easy to key on their offense. Double tight end, the backfield stack. Pitch back, Hollifield, he's got a convoy. And a great defensive play by number 96 for the Orangeman, Jerry Kimmel, the senior out of Cookwood, New York. 6'2", 245, beat his man, excellent penetration, and that's a big sack because it puts West Virginia into passing situation. The people at Syracuse say that Jerry Kimmel is probably their best technique playing defensive lineman. There, it looked like West Virginia was trying to cross him up, run to the right. He was a co-captain on his high school football and basketball team at Susquehanna High School up in Kirkwood, New York. So now, it is second down and 14 yards to go. Timko. Will not get to throw it. Outside the 20-yard line in the grasp of Doug Pina. A good call by West Virginia. They play fake here. Watch Doug Pina there on the right of your screen. Comes in and does a good job of not letting Timko get away. Pina last year worked behind Jerry Allen. He's an excellent athlete. Had a very good spring practice. Very intelligent athlete, the coaches say. He knows the system very well, and he certainly demonstrated it there on good penetration. So the line of scrimmage now backed up to the 21-yard line. It brings up third and 19. Motion across by Basil, the tight end. Timko backpedaling. Way shy of first down yardage. They had to get it down to the three and a half, and Tom Pigeon, the junior, 5'10", 223 pounds, made the stop. So it brings out the field goal team now. The drive started back at the 20-yard line, and the Mountaineers at least should come out with a three-point lead. Charlie Bauman, who is 12 out of 16 and field goal prize, almost hash mark right side. This will be a 27-yard try. Snap, spot, kick is up, and it is good. So the Mountaineers drive down and score with a field goal of 27 yards out by Bauman, and they lead the Orangemen 3 nothing. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. I'm Jim Kelly, along with former Nebraska quarterback David Holm. Also spent 10 years in the National Football League with the Colts, the Raiders. Buffalo. It's a long list. You lost your suitcase. We couldn't see all the travel tags. 
Actually, I broadcast the last game you started in the National Football League. You also broadcast my first game I ever started. I think it was the only game you started. One and the same. Charlie Bauman, who just had that 27-yard field goal, hash mark far side across the way, spots it at the 40-yard line. 82, the freshman Tom Kane back deep. And the other freshman, number 36, Rob Drummond. Kane bobbles the ball at the five, better pick it up. A freshman mistake, and the Orangemen will start deep in their own territory. It'll be first and ten at the Syracuse 14-yard line. There is young Don McPherson. Six victories out of seven starts since the Orangemen have switched quarterbacks. And there is what McPherson has done. Eleven touchdown tosses, five interceptions. He's also run for seven touchdowns. He can pull it down. They run out of what head coach Dick McPherson likes to call the freeze option. Motion across by Siano. Fullback dive and nothing doing straight ahead. Excellent penetration that time by Derek Christensen, the senior out of St. Albans, West Virginia. He is 6'4", 230. Let's talk a little bit about that freeze option, David. Just exactly what is it? On the freeze option, they will fake to the fullback up the middle. The tailback will not step one direction or the other. As soon as the fake is done, he'll go to the side of the option. It sets it up, and it gives a little better timing for the pitch. McPherson, an outstanding athlete, battled injuries throughout his career. Looks over that defense on second and ten. Can pull it down, fires, got Siano, got a first down. Siano bumped out of bounds by David Lockwood, the freshman out of Philadelphia. Up front, the middle guard is David Grant, number 98. The tackle, Mike Herzog, 51 on the right side. The left tackle is Jeff Lucas, number 99. Linebackers, Matt Smith, 50. Derek Christensen, 49. Van Richardson, 37. And Freddie Smalls outside, number 30. The secondary coming up. It is first and 10 for Syracuse. Up just shy of their own 25-yard line. I pro set. Grime is the fullback. Drummond the tailback. Pitch back to Drummond. And Drummond gets chopped down up at the 28-yard line. David, a very late developing play and almost a mistake on the pitch. A very late developing play. A good job of Don McPherson getting rid of that ball. Mike Siano there, 42 receptions. He sets a Syracuse single-season record. At 6'4", he's a big target for McPherson. He's got the good hands. Excellent concentration, the coach. Does he remind you of anybody that you used to throw to? His idol, Mike Ciani, who used to play for the Oakland Raiders, that's who they say is not only his idol, but runs patterns like Mike. And he watched him at Villanova. Ciano wide to the left side. McPherson wants to throw, now options it off, gets it to Drummond. Drummond batters his way across the 30, up near the 33-yard line. Freddie Smalls, the senior from Philadelphia, 6'2", 222, made the tackle secure. So you've got some Philadelphia natives on both sides of the football now. Well, there Don McPherson showed how he makes things happen. He was trying to throw a deep post there. He saw no one was open. His pitch man was out. It was really supposed to be an option pitch. He threw it out there like a pass. Almost a hurry-up offense. 7.44 and counting left to go in quarter number one. This is the first possession for the Orangemen of Syracuse. Again, that high pro set. Syracuse adjusting the defense, and they read it perfectly. McPherson on the option, and Van Richardson out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, came crashing through. McPherson never had a chance to put the pigskin away. Dennis Brown, West Virginia defensive coordinator, said he was going to blitz their linebackers. Here, Richardson comes right through the gap, puts a big hit on uh, McPherson. He was lucky to hold on to that ball. So the first punting opportunity for Jim Fox, the junior out of Newington, Connecticut. That is he. And dropping back deep, Harvey Smith, the junior out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, who averages about... 12 yards per punt return. West Virginia should come out of this in good field position. Jimmy Fox hangs up a beauty. Smith fields it inside the 25, breaks a tackle, and slithers across the 30-yard line. So, Bauman's 29-yard field goal, and West Virginia leads by three. Welcome back to the 33rd meeting between West Virginia and Syracuse. The Orangemen holding a 19 to 13 advantage. These teams have met every year since 1955. Number one, Granite Bell, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, deployed wide to the right top of the screen. Calvin Phillips, Bell motions across. Timko, 
Gives it off to Hollifield, and Hollifield dives to the 32-yard line. Ted Gregory, number 93, the sophomore out of East Islip, Long Island, came up to make the tackle. 35 and 93, Ted Gregory. There is Gray, number 32. All he is is the leading ground gainer and pass receiver for the Mountaineers. We're checking to see if he might have been shaken up on that first drive. Meanwhile, John Hollifield, the junior out of Minnesota, checks in as his replacement. Quick snap. Backpedaling. Tinko fires. Got his man over the middle at the 37-yard line. That is Keith Wynn, the freshman out of Dayton, Ohio, and Tom Pigeon, the junior linebacker from New York State, came up to make the hit. Let's see if we can isolate David maybe on this series on big number 89. I say big because he's changed jerseys. He's usually the left tackle. Tom Hamilton, 6'6", 270 pounds. He usually wears number 72. He's the tight end on the left side, number 89. I'd but, like to be linebacker and see that ball come out. I'd like to be Tim Green on that right side over Joe Zwiak and Hamilton. That's why they put him there. Hollifield. Nothing doing. Loss of a yard. And the Orangeman defense fired up. Cooper Gardner, number 29, came from his safety spot for the hit. On that last play, Hamilton came down on Green. Joswiak showed great ability to get outside, but a great job by the Syracuse defense. And Steve Sapiric, the punter, he has kicked the pigskin within, well, there's Schwede's back deep. We'll tell you what Sapiric has done. He didn't do it there, but he gets a good bounce. Schwede picks it up. And the young man whose dad was an All-American here at Syracuse many, many years ago crosses the 27-yard line. A penalty flag to be checked out. We were talking about the punter, Steve Sapiric, for West Virginia. The senior, just one kick shy of the Mountaineer single-season record of 70 kicks, which he set last year, and 176 yards shy of his own single-season yardage mark of 2,942. So he broke it with that last punt. Penalty against the Orangemen, so with a 3-0 Mountaineer lead, we'll be back at Syracuse's ball when we return. Right back to the Carrier Dome after these messages. Watch number 10 on the left of your screen, Marcus Paul. He dives, you can see he misses there, but he hits Hamilton. Tom Hamilton right in the back, there's the clip. So instead of the 24-yard line, the ball is now resting just inside the 13-yard line. The Orangemen starting deep in their own territory for the second time tonight. McPherson, two for two, 15 yards passing, one carry for a minus seven yards. Bends in, slot formation to the right side, Siano inside, Schwedes is out. McPherson, a dive to the fullback, that's Grimes, Roland Grimes out of Maryland nothing doing and Mike Herzog the senior tackle out of Waldorf Maryland 6'3 252 pounds on the tackle Mike Her Herzog de described as a guy that gives 110 percent every play Syracuse losing the battle of field position here they are not really a tough running team up the middle they've got to get outside and put pressure on with Don McPherson and of course one of the things Don Nealon wanted to do was get on top early and try to take the crowd here at the Carrier Dome out of the football game Schwede's deployed wide to the left side and coming to the right side, top of your screen, number 14, Siena. 4.36 left in the first quarter. McPherson almost looked like a busted play, David Hum. It works across the 17-yard line. Freddie Smalls, the linebacker, and the outside comes up to make the hit. Top 20 scores of games today. Well, it was a tough season and career finale for Jerry Faust at Notre Dame. Miami, no problem at all. They win big. Alabama got a 50-yard-plus field goal on the game's final play to upset Auburn. And Florida State, well, they were no match at all for Florida. Tennessee handled Vanderbilt, and, of course, the Volunteers are bowled on. McPherson backpedals on third and five. Dives for the first down at the 25-yard line. Larry Holly, the junior out of Menora Park, Pennsylvania, submarined him, but McPherson picks up the first down. Well, Don McPherson shows what a great athlete he is there, and he shows why he's leading the team in rushing. Here he rolls out right, but he really looks like he never even thinks about throwing the ball. Five yards for a first down, he just tucks the ball away, picks it up. Remember, he's only six foot, 180 pounds. Does a good job of getting the first down. But despite his size, he has carried the ball 137 times, 450 yards, and seven touchdowns. He is the leading rusher for Syracuse. Grimes, not much over the center spot. 
McPherson and Lucas came up to make the tackle. Well, do you like that freeze option? It's a little different look, and Dick McPherson, the head coach, said that they'll run basically every option there is in the book. The freeze option is their major one. Here, David Grant, their nose guard, he's playing a great game so far for West Virginia. He's going to be a key to stop the middle of that running game. Second down and 11 after that loss of one. So McPherson says Siano out wide to the left side. Swady is deployed top of your screen. Backs again in the eye pro set. Too much time. Five yards and a costly penalty. And that is so frustrating for the coaches. Very frustrating for the coaches, but also sometimes the coaches can set that up themselves. They've got such a blitz and an audible control package in their offense that sometimes that'll take too much time. Second down. So it will back the Orangemen up five yards, and it brings up now second down and 16 yards to go. Very emotional game for both sides. Of course, a lot of recruiting at stake. A lot of high school players who are contemplating going to University of Pittsburgh, West Virginia, and Syracuse watching tonight on ESPN. And bragging rights and recruiting rights are at stake. Motion by the left tackle. And that'll back up the Orangemen five more yards. Well, it was second and 11, now it's second and 21. Well, two five-yard penalties moves them back in almost the situation where it's impossible to get a first down. Also, they lose the field position if they don't get it. Dead ball foul, ball start, offense, still second down. It was Bob Brodsky, number 74, the senior out of Sandusky, Ohio, not far down the road from the Cedar Point Amusement Park. Second and 21, slot formation to the left side. Swades is in, Siano is out. McPherson, loose football at the 10-yard line. Big pile up at the 10, diving for the ball was Robert Drummond, and Drummond got the ball back. He actually had to dribble it because it bounced to him. It wasn't a pitch. McPherson was chopped down as he threw the ball. Drummond does a great job of just recovering this ball. Watch the heat that Don McPherson has. David Grant, a great job of getting to him. The ball's on the ground, and Drummond just does a good job of covering it up. Derek Christian there and Fred Smalls. Almost a big turnover for West Virginia. David Grant, middle guard, had the best shot at it for West Virginia, so now it is third and 25. You wouldn't expect they would put it up the way they played so far this deep in their own territory. They do not. Drummond fumbles the ball inside the five, and I believe it was covered by Syracuse. Well, it's not going to take the near 30,000 here in the Carrier Dome to express themselves here, and there's Dick McPherson. He's not happy either. He's not happy, and he's saying, that's okay, let's stay together. Here, number 50, Matt Smith strips the ball from uh, Robert Drummond. Drummond does a great job of getting it back. Great job by Matt Smith. Well, that would have been big. Great job by Drummond on two successive plays. So out of the shadow of his own goalpost, Jim Fox again. He has punted once already tonight. You look from the end zone as if you're Jim Fox. Harvey Smith awaits. It is high. It's not very deep. Smith on a dead run inside the 40. Inside the 30. They've got a wall. First and 10, West Virginia at the 14-yard line. Doug Pena made the touchdown saving tackle. Helped out by Roger Rimo. So it's been all West Virginia here in quarter number one, and there's just 43 seconds left to go. Smith catches this with a full head of steam. Does a good job of faking him like he's going to go inside, gets outside. A lane right down that left side. Ramos going to come up and do a good job. There's Pina also. First and ten for the Mountaineers. The last time they started a drive, it began the football game. They started at their own 20-yard line. A 29-yard field goal by Charlie Bowman has been the only scoring, but the Mountaineers in total control. Timko hands off, and Tommy Gray is back in, and the Mountaineers' leading ground gainer and leading pass receiver hammers inside very close to the 10-yard line. Well, that time, Tim Green got off his block and made a good play. 
We'll see if West Virginia goes back to their left side. Last time they went to their right side and they had to settle for a field goal. Well, again, wearing number 89, you've got Tom Hamilton, ordinarily a left tackle, now lined up as a tight end. He's 6'6 and 270. And, of course, Brian Joshua at 6'6 and 290. They go the other way. Gray looks for a block against the grain. Inside the 10. Down at the 8-yard line. It'll be third and six. That's the end of the first quarter, but the West Virginia Mountaineers are knocking on the door. They already lead 3-0. Along with former Nebraska Cornhusker quarterback David Hom, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to the Carrier Dome here in Syracuse. The Orangeman band across the way, but right now it's all West Virginia. It's third and four as Mike Timko, the quarterback out of Euclid, Ohio, looks over that defense. Motion by Pecan. The option goes nowhere. Timmy Green, the All-American for Syracuse, stayed in his lane and chopped Timko down. Timmy Green goes on a slash right here. You'll watch him just go right down the, the line of scrimmage, right on the left of your screen. Watch Green. He beats Joswiak there, but I don't understand the last two plays. West Virginia's run to their right when they've had so much success to their left. Well, we're watching now Charlie Bauman, who came into the game 12 out of 16. He's got a 29-yard field goal. This will be a 27-yard effort. Hash mark far side. Snap, spot, kick, and it is good. 6-0, the Mountaineers in total control against the Syracuse Orangemen. But, of course, Syracuse just one play away from taking the lead. 14-22 left in the first half. It has been all West Virginia. 29-yard field goal on the first possession of the Mountaineers. And then a 27-yard effort by Charlie Bauman. He's been all the scoring, and he will kick off now. Just inside the hash mark to the near side. It is end over end. It is not very deep. And Tom Kane fields at the three. Gets the block at the 15. Breaks it outside across the 25 and near the 26-yard line in the grasp of Brad Metheny, the defensive back for the Mountaineers. First quarter stats for West Virginia, and it's been all Mountaineers. All Mountaineers there. You can see West Virginia 66 yards rushing to minus 5 for Syracuse, 8.05 to 6.55 in time of possession, but they've won the battle of field position. I think that's been the big key to this game. McPherson can run all day. That's why he's the leading ground gainer. Derek Christensen, the strong side linebacker, chased him halfway across the field and came up with a tackle. Well, Don McPherson can thank Roland Grimes there for the block. Watch the right of your screen, the block that Roland Grimes gets to allow Don McPherson to get outside. There you see the very end of it. McPherson's got great speed, so once he gets outside, this kid's just like a halfback. The ball just across the 44-yard line. Siano comes out wide to the right side. Sweaty's deployed top of the screen. Brian Abraham comes in in a nickelback situation now. Backpedaling McPherson. Safety valves it out. Gets it to Grimes. Grimes dives to the 39-yard line, and a penalty flag is down. is clipping against Syracuse. Thank you, Jim and David. No score here, but Oklahoma is driving snow and sleep storm as the first down at the seven-yard line. Spencer Tillman of Oklahoma carries it inside the five of Oklahoma State. It is second down and goal to go under miserable conditions. Carries down near the three-yard line. You're absolutely right. This weather is, and, and the wind shifts, and it comes into this booth. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the Carrier Dome where they're watching the Syracuse-West Virginia game from. I can guarantee you that. But this is the first real threat of the game. Oklahoma's finally gotten its skating act together. Uh oh, oh lost the ball, and it may be State. Who gets it? They got oh, it back. Oklahoma gets it back. Tillman, I think, jumped right on it again. That's number 20 under there, Spencer Tillman. Jumped right back on the football. 
And so it is third down and goal to go, but now from the six. The ball just pops out of Holloway's hands. Look at he never gets possession. Then it's kicked back. And Spencer Tillman, that's just a great hustle on his part. He went after the football. Now, if they don't make it here, you might think of field goal and kicking a field goal in this kind of conditions. Holloway got a little spot to walk up and punch that ball through. Pat Jones, head coach of Oklahoma State, his team on the defensive and the shadow on the goal line for the first time. Third down and goal to go from the six. I don't fire. It's held on to take there. Holloway is going for left. Drops the ball, and they say it still belongs, but he was stopped. Still belongs to Oklahoma. The news Williams, the cornerback, came up and got him, but it's fourth down, and now we're going to see Tom Tim Lasher come in and try a field goal. Jim, again, what they want this quarterback to do, as we talked about before, is pitch the ball. The car, he fakes the car. Now, down the line, now watch. They're going to take, take him on right there, Holloway, and all of a sudden, Williams comes up and slams him to the ground. The ball went out, but that's after he's on the ground. The ground cannot cause a fumble, even in a snowstorm. 27 yards, Paul, in a snowstorm by <laughs> Tim Lasher, who has hit nine field goals in a row. And this is asking a little much of him because he's making the run-up on this slick ice. The ball is up and make it 10 in a row and give the score to Oklahoma, three to nothing. Now for those of you watching Syracuse and West Virginia, let us go back now to Jim Kelly. Thank you, Jim Simpson. The weather here indoors at the Carrier Dome and let's go back just a couple of plays. It was McPherson on the option play, rolling out to his right. Watch now as he tries to pitch the ball. It's a little late, it's a little high and it was never cleanly fielded. And coming up with a loose football, it was Travis Curtis, number five, the junior out of Potomac, Maryland. So now, the West Virginia Mountaineers starting inside the 10, across the five, goes Chris Pecan, number 39, the junior out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Jerry Kimmel made the tackle. There is Don Nealon in his sixth season as the head coach of the Mountaineers. Don Nealon, his team really banged up. They really weren't playing well this year. Their defense wasn't playing well. Their offense, he's had three different quarterbacks start at one time during this year, so he's got to be real happy with their play in this first half. Second down, goal to go from the four-yard line. The Mountaineers in total control. They look like the team headed to the Cherry Bowl. Hollifield, a tremendous effort by the Orangemen defense. Ted Gregory, number 93, the sophomore out of East Islip, New York. Ted Gregory, the nose guard, makes a great play here. Again, I don't understand why they don't run to their left with Joe Zwiak. But watch Ted Gregory out of the left of your screen. Their nose guard come up and make a big stop. Injured player, timeout. Injured West Virginia player down at the five-yard line. Looks like one of the interior linemen who was pulling the block. We'll check on that number for you. It's still 12-16 left to go in the first half. It has been a scoreless first half for Syracuse, David, and they look a little flat. Well, they look a little flat, and they look a little shaken up on offense, like, like the West Virginia defense is confusing them with their schemes. If, if Syracuse can get away with just giving up a field goal here, it will be a moral victory for their defense. And it'll be a 9 nothing deficit. Why would you think that the Orangemen have come out so flat? They've got everything going. They've been at home all week practicing. Don Nealon said the Mountaineers had to practice in terribly inclement weather down in West Virginia. It was raining. It was soggy. Did not have a good week of practice. Well, we'll examine all of that and come back. It is 6 nothing West Virginia, and the Mountaineers are knocking on the door. Here's the injury to West Virginia's Tom Hamilton, number 89 on the right of your screen. Watch his right leg right here. Well, that, that's a terrible looking action. He gets up and walks off with help. The last game of the year, they're not going to a bowl. This is a time when a player on the team with a record like that doesn't want to be hurt. Looks like he's in a lot of pain right there. Well, Hamilton was filling the rather large shoes of Scotty Saylor. Saylor is 6'5", 285. And it has been a season of injuries for Don Nealon's Mountaineers. They've had to shuffle their offensive line, and it's been a tough put job, but they've been doing well. Third and goal for West Virginia from the eight-yard line of Syracuse. Slot formation wide to the right. Granis Bell is outside. Basil inside. Penalty flags are down. Tim Green in pursuit of Timko. And now there are penalty flags to be checked out. Timmy Green might have jumped offside. 
Well, they certainly were are still well within Charlie Bauman's field goal range. He's been magnificent. There is Charlie, number eight, over on the sideline. He's got a 29-yarder and a 27-yarder. Illegal procedure, false start, offense, third down. Third and goal on the 13-yard line. Thank you, Jim Simpson, and we welcome those of you watching the bragging rights of Oklahoma. Hollafield and a dive around the left side. It was third and 13 for West Virginia. You see the swarming Orangeman defense right there, led by number 93, Ted Gregory, the sophomore. There is Don Nealon. It is decision-making time, but already with two field goals by Charlie Bauman of 29 and 27 yards, not much of a decision. They are right smack in the middle of the football field. Bauman, who came into the game 12 out of 16, has been perfect here tonight. A 30-yard field goal try. Snap, spot, kick is on its way, and it is no good. He missed it wide to the right. The score stands 6-0 in favor of West Virginia. Let's go back now to Oklahoma and Oklahoma State and Jim Simpson. 11-23 left to go before halftime. The Syracuse Orangemen, after that turnover, have dodged a bullet. There's still just one play from the lead. There's number 89, Hamilton, for the West Virginia Mountaineers. We will check on that knee injury for you. In the meantime, it is first and 10. A loose football again. McPherson just bobbled the ball. They need Stickham, David. Stickham's been outlawed, but McPherson, he looks like he's a little shaken up here. McPherson, watch him. It's a reverse pivot. He doesn't even get the ball to the back. It looked like the back there. Chris, Chris Barnes. Barnes wasn't even aware that he was going to get the handoff. The Orangemen are simply not crisp on offense at all. They have not been since the opening snap. 10.55 and counting left to go before halftime. Loss of one, second and 11. Barnes is out after that fumble. Roland Grimes checks back in, number 48. The freeze option. McPherson fires over the middle. Got his man, Schwedes. First down at the 44. Travis Curtis. It was simply a post pattern over the middle. And this young man, whose father was an All-American back in 1959, came up with a big reception. Scott Schwedes runs a 4-3-7-40, the fastest guy on the Syracuse team. Runs a simple square in right there. Travis Curtis is going to have to run him down from behind. Schwedes, tremendous speed, a great punt returner and a great receiver. Schwedes was the top receiver in his freshman year. That tells you how good Scotty is. He's flanked out wide to the right. To the left side, top of your screen, Sienna. First back through is 48, Roland Grimes out of Forestville, Maryland. He cracks it across the 47-yard line. John Moses, number 74, defensively for the Mountaineers. There is Grimes and what he has done this year. Again, the leading rusher for Syracuse, their quarterback. That tells you about the state of their ground control. Well, it tells the state of their offense. When your quarterback has to make things happen like that, I'm sure Dick McPherson would like the responsibility spread between his backs just to keep his quarterback healthy. Second down and seven. Wide open, the tight end. First down and more. It's Jim Tate. Loose football. Larry Holly comes up with it. But I believe they're going to say that Tate was down before the fumble. The West Virginia defense had Don McPherson a little shaken up there early. Here, throwing to his offside makes a perfect throw to Tate. Travis Curtis has to come up and make another tackle. Now, the one thing that Dick McPherson said was they don't use the tight end very much. They haven't thrown to him lately, and it might be a key for this game. McPherson, five out of five, passing 49 yards, but his team trails six to nothing. That reverse pivot, he bumps into his own lineman. Jeff Lucas, 99, will get credit for the tackle, but watch the reverse pivot here by number nine, and he actually ran into his own offensive guard or tackle on the right side. Well, West Virginia was uh, fortunate early. When they were blitzing, here they come again, Van Richardson, but he runs into Craig Stoppel, and Stoppel was just too deep on the option. Linebackers are coming, all three on the blitz. Van Christensen on the right of your screen comes up and puts a pretty good stop on McPherson. Second down and 12 after that loss of two. Brady is wide to the right. Siano top of the screen. McPherson fires wide open. Brady. 
inside the 25, make it inside the 30-yard line. Bumped out of bounds. The Orangemen want a late hit. Watch Travis Curtis, number five. Was it a late hit, David? Well, here McPherson shows some composure. He looks to his left, comes back to Schwade. He's wide open. Schwade believes he's going to be hit just as he catches it. He kind of gets ready there, turns up. I think they could have called that out of bounds. They kept tackling, and Travis Curtis, they're out of bounds, along with Fred Smalls. Line of scrimmage will be just across the 27-yard line. This is by far the deepest penetration of Syracuse. McPherson sends Siano wide to the top of the screen. Now they send Tate over as a flanker wide left. Roland Grimes inside the 20. Freddie Smalls with the tackle. Watch the blocking on the right side. Stoppel 76, Marone 78. Dick McPherson says they can have their Joe's react. We like our Doug Marone, number 78. Makes a good block there. Gives Roland Grimes a, a good lane to run in. Marone earned a starting spot as a sophomore. He was a second team All East selection in his sophomore season. Loose football. West Virginia comes up with it again. McPherson pulled back quickly from the snap of the center, Jim Leibel, and that is the third turnover already that they have lost here in this first half. Turnovers are killing the Syracuse offense. Let's see if we can find the mistake on the, on the exchange right there. Pulled out before he had the football. It looked like there that uh, Don McPherson didn't even know the snap count. Sometimes a quarterback can forget the sna snap count. And Travis Curtis, number five, recovered the fumble for West Virginia. The score, the Mountaineers six, Syracuse nothing. Back to the Carrier Dome after these messages. who fumbled just talked with McPherson the coach and the coach said get yourself in the game you made that audible you're responsible for that turnover 809 to go before halftime Kemp go to go airborne for the Mountaineers looks downfield for Gratis Bell incomplete that's the way to loosen up that defense are you surprised the way that Syracuse has thrown the ball? McPherson, six out of six for 60 yards. They're just not going totally to the passing game? Well, they've been successful every time they've thrown. With the athletic ability of Don McPherson, McPherson, I'm surprised that they don't roll out, get him outside, put the pressure on that defense where he can run or throw. You saw that Mike Timko, two out of three passing. The nickelback, David Lee, number 20, a senior, checks into the lineup now for the Orangemen on second down and 10. Pretty good blitz down. Coming the other way at a counter near the 19-yard line, Peckham out of Uniontown, Pennsylvania. It almost looked like there was motion on the line by the right guard. Watch Tim Green and watch the quickness of him. Number 72 on the left just jumps outside. He gives the running back that lane. There was no holding there, but look at the quickness of Tim Green. The right guard was very definitely in motion. You saw it very clearly on that replay, but there was no penalty flag. Third and six. Line of scrimmage. Just shy of the 20-yard line. Big play for the Orangeman defense. Quick count by Timko. Gives off to Gray. A great move at the 20. He was stopped for a loss of about three yards. Gave the hip and then took it away and got the next four all on his own. Cooper Gardner, the freshman out of West Haven, Connecticut, came up to make the tackle secure. And it's a punting situation for West Virginia. Syracuse should get the ball in good field position. We'll see if they come out throwing the ball. They've got to move it and score here with only seven minutes left in the first half. Steve Sapiric, who has broken his own West Virginia University record this year with 70 punts in this game, he broke the record, will kick to Scott Schwede. Loose football again. It was stripped at the 40-yard line, and it was a good thing for Syracuse that the out-of-bounds marker was there. Brian McAllister, number 26, Stripped the football from Schwedes, and the Orangemen just can't hang on. Once you start fumbling, one time, once uh, fumbles start happening, once the ball comes right out, if he was in, in the middle of the field, that would have been an easy recovery. 6-0 our score here. Let's check in on the bragging rights for Oklahoma. It's State 
up against the Sooners, Jim Simpson. Welcome to all of you watching the Syracuse West Virginia game. Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire. The ball is at the 15 yard line. Oklahoma leading 3 0, threatening again. Third down and about a yard to go in this blinding, nearly blinding snowstorm. Oklahoma's dominated play. Here's Holloway throwing the ball, and it is intercepted by Harry Roberts, the defensive end. They drove, never threw the ball until they got down here, and then put it up, and Harry Roberts grabbed it. Jim, I, I, all right, I know you've got a strong football team, but I don't understand that play. They were trying to throw the ball to Keith Jackson, number 88. But take a look at Hollow, Holloway there. When he goes back to throw, he sets himself, and Roberts just steps right in front of Jackson, takes the ball away. He was covered from behind by Williams. Really no chance to get the ball in there. They were running so well. Why would you even think it with a half a yard to go think about throwing a football? And he still had two more down. Well, they did, and Oklahoma State's got it. And the big thing here is, of course, that Oklahoma has been able to stop Oklahoma State. They've not been able to move the ball, but now we see the one-back offense. Welcome back indoors to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. There might be snow outside here, but inside it's a very comfortable 55 degrees. Not so comfortable for the Orangemen, the way they've been kicking the football around literally. They just haven't hung on to it. Six fumbles, they've lost two, but here they start throwing again. McPherson out of the pocket. Can run, needs a block, dives for the 30-yard line. Matt Smith, the outside linebacker, 6'3", 235 pounds, made the tackle on McPherson. Again, David, I go back to what we said before that last toss, and that is why they're not going more to the passing game, because they seem to have the corners and the secondary of the Mountaineers confused. The corners and the defensive backs of West Virginia totally respect Siano and Swade. It seems that they can just run them off and run the hook and comebacks all night. Second and a short yard. McPherson will take it himself behind the blocking of his center. Jim Libel out of Queens, New York, 6'4", 245 pounds. Syracuse has left the ball on the ground. They fumbled six times, but they've only given up two field goals. Here they're in position to get in field goal position themselves to score a touchdown and go ahead. There is the Down Easterner out of Maine, Old Town, Maine. Dick McPherson was born 55 years ago in his fifth year as the head coach here at Syracuse. Siano at the 16 yard line. Lockwood, the freshman, spun around. Advantage to the veteran wide receiver, Ciano. Well, here Stacy Smith will show the respect for Ciano that he's had in this league for a long time. He's wide open on the comeback. Stacy Smith not anywhere near knocking that ball down. Ciano came into the game. You look at Mike right there. 41 catches, 772 yards. Two catches, 23 yards in this game. And now the Orangemen trailing 6-0 with 5.08 left to go have decided to take a timeout. Two field goals by West Virginia's Charlie Bauman from 29 and 27, and that's it so far. Time remaining in the first half, and it has been all West Virginia, but perhaps that last missed field goal spurred the Orangemen on. This is by far their deepest penetration. Line of scrimmage now, the 16-yard line, it's first and 10. McPherson in the eye pro set. It's the freeze option. Reverse pivot, pitches it back. Not much doing for Robert Drummond. Loose football again and again. West Virginia. David Lockwood, the freshman beaten on the preceding play, came up with a fumble recovery. David Grant, the nose guard, forced the fumble. Here David Grant is going to hit Drummond. The pitch is outside, but Drummond controls it. Watch Grant hit the ball. Travis Curtis, also a tremendous tackle. Recovered there by number 41, David Lockwood. Here's the end zone look. Drummond has the ball put away right here. Watch David Grant, 98 there, and Travis Curtis. A tremendous hits on Drummond and a good recovery by Lockwood. And the Mountaineers have dodged the bullet. It's first and 10. West Virginia at their own 15. Timko backpedaling, wants to pass, but instead gives it off inside to John Gay out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, the senior, a six-footer, 218 pounds. Almost unbelievable now. Syracuse has fumbled the ball seven times in the first half, and they've lost three of them. Well, that's where you'd think Dick McPherson would go, go in and say, cover the ball up. He told us in his meetings yesterday, we want our backs running north and south and protect the ball. You ever play in a game where you had seven fumbles in one half? Well, I don't think I have. This, this has got to be frustrating for Coach Dick McPherson. Holla 
downfield. Not much doing left side. Good defensive play by Rudy Reed. Reed and Green are the two defensive captains and the two men that really make it work for Dick McPherson's defense. There is Reed, number 35, right there. They call him Steady Eddie because he is indeed that. Just a very steady performer. Started all 84 games, leading tackler last year. He was the second leading tackler as a freshman. And there is Timmy Green, All-American candidate. So much for a third down conversion beyond five yards. It is third and six. Hollifield in motion. Tempko goes back. Looks over the middle. Unloads to Hollifield. Hollifield with a stiff arm. Dives to the 25. And that will be very close to first down yardage. David Lee, number 20, was the starting strong side corner all year. Suffered a partially separated shoulder last week against Rutgers. But watch number 20 right there after the stiff arm come up and make the tackle. With stiff arm Cooper Gardner, number 29, David Lee does a good job of tackling, but a great job by Hollifield of getting the first down. They did a great job on Tim Green there with the double team. That's how you get toe turf or turf toe. Hollifield the other way. It'll be second down and ten. Jerome Hall, the senior from Syracuse. How much of a decision there? He decided to stay home and play before family and friends, huh? Jerome Hall. Great maturity since the spring practice, Dick McPherson told us the other day. Hampered by injuries early in his career. Started out as a defensive back as a freshman. Moved to the linebacker spot. Second down and ten. Timko splits his back. Back pedal. Incomplete at the 31-yard line. Keith Wynn back there on the cover. Timko came into the game. 30 completions, 63 attempts, just under 500. Two interceptions and three touchdowns. He is not the better passer on the West Virginia team. No, but he's, he's the quarterback that produces there. Brian Joswiak had Jerry Kimmel with two big paws and just pulled him right down. Holding. Offense. Ten yards. Second down. Nickel defense in now as far as the Syracuse Orangemen and the freshman out of Burlington, New Jersey, David Holmes checks on in. Second down and 20. Long count by Timko to Hollifield. And Hollifield cracks it near the 20-yard line. Timmy Pigeon, number 54, the junior, 5'10", 223 pounds on the tackle. Now they say of Pigeon, as there's another penalty flag to be checked out. No, it's Syracuse taking a time up. 2.34 left to go before halftime. Tim Pigeon is not, by his size, the true prototype of a linebacker, but he just gets it done. He's a real competitor, and the coaches will say, David, he loves to knock your head off. He was a fullback and a sprinter in high school, just put so much weight on that he got out of track. Don Nealon taking the headset off, talking things over with Mike Timko. You know, as strange as it may seem, despite being pushed all over the football field here at the Carrier Dome in the first half with two and a half left, if the Orangeman defense can come up with one more big play, they'll get the ball back in pretty good field position. And with the arm and the option of McPherson, they could take the lead with a touchdown, despite the fact that they've fumbled seven times and lost three of them in the first half. Head coach Dick McPherson could be very proud of his defense. They're the group that's kept them in this game. Well, I did the kickoff classic earlier this year, Boston College against BYU, and coming up on ESPN, college football, BYU against Hawaii on Saturday, December the 7th at 7.30 Eastern time. Robbie Bosco, of course, closing out his regular season college career against the Rainbows. Bosco, a true Heisman Trophy candidate. The Heisman Award will be announced in New York on Saturday night. What do you think? With Alabama beating Auburn today, I don't know if that helped Bo Jackson's chances. Any. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what Jackson's statistics. They said this was a game that could ice it for him. Third and 16. Kempko looking over the defense. Nickel back in now is David Holmes. Kempko in trouble. Got his man up across the 35 near the 37, and that should be a huge first down for West Virginia. Keith Wynn, number 81, the freshman back there on the coverage. But watch the catch. 
Watch the secondary. They go five under. You can see the linebackers and corners pull up. Keith Wynn right there in the middle of your screen just finds that dead zone and makes a great play and takes a good hit from Holmes. Timko does a little uh, Don McPherson right here. Rolls to his right, throws on the run. Wynn hit just as he catches the ball. A little misdirection play. Doesn't fool Syracuse at all, but I'm sure Don Nealon is just happy not to have punted the ball away. Another timeout asked for down on the field. This one by Syracuse again. 2.04 left to go before halftime. What's the strategy in this timeout? Well, here I'm not sure with two minutes left and one timeout left that Syracuse thinks they can get the ball back because they won't have that good, good field position. Nealon's got to be just very happy with his offense and the way his team's played here in the first half. Well, we told you about Alabama upsetting Auburn earlier. Tonight, Georgia Tech, there's a surprise against the Bulldogs of Vince Dooley. LSU, that is not a surprise. Bill Arnsbarger's Tigers are roaring against Tulane. That game's at the Superdome. And outside in the snow, the Cowboys are trailing Oklahoma now 10 to nothing. They played it fairly tight early, but the Sooners are, and you've played in so many of those games, opening things up. Well, Oklahoma is so tough at home, but with weather conditions like they are, that's where the weather could come into play and affect an outcome of a game. Tough to play catch up in a driving snowstorm. They, they, they run the wishbone there at Oklahoma, so that ball could be on the ground a lot too. We've got 2.04 left to go before halftime. Lots of special features coming up at the intermission. Second down and eight, West Virginia. They'll keep it on the ground and apparently be content to go in leading 6 0 at halftime. Hollifield dives over that right side, blocking there by Scott Saylor, 73, moved from the left side to the right because of injuries. Jerry Kimmel on the coverage. Third and six. Third and six as the ball is across the 40 yard line and the clock now inside of a minute 40. Syracuse is going to get this ball back in good field position. If they can stop this third down and six attempt by West Virginia, we'll see what they can do with their two minute offense. The last time that Syracuse trailed at halftime this season was against Penn State. Hollifield in motion, dances around, Timko dances, penalty flag, and Timmy Green, the first of the Orange Crush to get there. You see the seed for the captain on his jersey. He's got a decision, Tim Green does, at the end of this year, whether to be a very high draft choice in the National Football League or continue his studies at Oxford. What a great problem for a young man. Illegal shift. Offense. Decline. Fourth down. He said he wants to do both. He said he'd like to go to Oxford and play in the NFL if he can work it out. Of course, Pat Hayden went on and was a Rhodes Scholar. Scott Tweedy is his back deep. And with any kind of a decent return, could set the Orangemen up in good field position with 75 seconds left. They almost blocked it. Tweedy signals the fair catch. It hits high at the 30-yard line, makes the catch at the 31. Tweedy at the 31-yard line. Tuesday, a big night here on ESPN. Last Tuesday night, it was the Dial Dick Patel show, but this Tuesday, it'll be Notre Dame and Digger Phelps up against Indiana and Bobby Knight. That's at 7.30 Eastern time. And then at 9.30, following the basketball game, we've got top right boxing coming up. A couple of big bouts there. And it'll be live boxing action and college basketball action Tuesday night here on ESPN. 67 seconds left to go before halftime. McPherson will go airborne. The Orangemen trail by six. Out of the backfield, number 36, Robert Drummond comes up with a key catch and the hurry-up offense. The hurry-up offense, and McPherson showed some strength right there. He had good pressure by Matt Smith, threw the ball, took a good lick, and they're in their two-minute offense. Siano wide to the right side. Swadey's top of the screen inside of 42 seconds now. McPherson fires to Tate, and Tate cannot hang on at the 47-yard line. Derek Christensen, number 49, made the uh, hit, but that was certainly a catchable ball that Tate should have had. Very catchable ball. He took his eye off the ball just as Christensen got to him, but still not a bad play. It stops the clock, 38 seconds to go. It's third down and about three yards, so this will be a big play and a big decision on fourth down, too. 
Tate, who wants more passes thrown to him, expected to be a big plus this year. But the coaches say he should be playing a lot better. Clock stopped on the incompleted pass. McPherson, nothing doing. Derek Christian again. By number I think it's time for the Hail Derek Mary pass. Christian. McPherson with an audible. Schwedes quickly lines up to the right side. Top of the screen is Siano. Four receivers in there now, and now McPherson takes the last time out. Well, they wasted about 10 seconds there trying to audible in a play. Dick McPherson, the coach there, was calling to Don McPherson, the quarterback, saying it's fourth down. If we're going to do something, let's call a timeout and make sure we get it right. It's fourth down, eight yards to go at the 34-yard line. Interesting situation now. If they throw the pass incomplete, West Virginia's got a shot. Well, that's the thing. and They, they have 30 seconds left on the clock. Dick McPherson calling to McPherson, the quarterback. If they throw it incomplete, the punt team, I think, is going out. Would have been great field position for West Virginia. It has not been a crisp first half for that man's team. Dick McPherson. There is the field goal kicker, McCauley. He's been relieved of his place kicking chores, at least on kickoffs, for the youngster who they're trying to get some game experience because he is the heir apparent. Of course, they're way out of Macaulay field goal range. That's a good call. So it'll be Fox coming in to do the putting. And if it's a short punt, or if West Virginia should get lucky and block it, good field position again for the Mountaineers. Stacy Smith drops back deep, number four, with 15 seconds left. Hanging kick. Smith will field. And on his keister at the 32. I didn't see his hand go up for the fair catch, did you? No, I didn't. He bobbled that ball and almost fumbled it, but a good play by Coach Dick McPherson. Now, if you're Don Nealon, you've got a free play. Eight seconds left. Why not have Timko throw the ball just as far downfield as he can? Hope for the reception, maybe the penalty. A good play. They're on their own 31 yard line. A lot of times, teams will line up three wide receivers on the wide side of the field throw the Hail Mary and, and hope for uh, a penalty or a, or a great play by one of their players. Going out wide to the right is Granis Bell, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. Gary Basil deployed wide to the left. Hollifield rips it across the 40, and that will do it in this first half. Two field goals by Bauman, 29 yards out on the Mountaineers' first possession, and then a 27-yard field goal by Bauman on West Virginia's second possession. After the first down, the clock is stopped. So we've got a first and ten situation. Would you put it up now? This is definitely the reason I think they called the timeout. I think we'll see Tim Coe put a lot of air under the ball, and hopefully one of his receivers can run underneath. But he's got to make the touchdown because now there's not enough time to take a timeout and get the field goal team out there. Or hope for a penalty because the half cannot end on a penalty. A penalty by the defense. Don Nealon head coach of West Virginia in his sixth season. 47 victories, 22 losses, one tie. Needs 11 victories to tie Art Lewis, who holds the all-time West Virginia University record with 58. Two and three against the Orangemen. Nealon is since taking over the reins. Two and two against his good friend Dick McPherson. Nickel defense. Holmes is in. Backpedaling. Timko wants it all. Puts up a rainbow. And it is intercepted at the 10. Marcus Paul comes up with the interception, and the first half comes to a close. Seven fumbles by Syracuse. They lost three. Two field goals by West Virginia's Charlie Bowman. And it has been all West Virginia. They were snubbed by the Aloha Bowl. This is their bowl game. Meanwhile, headed for the Cherry Bowl against Maryland, the Syracuse Orangemen, but they have been very flat. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State going on. Scores and highlights with George Grand coming up. And lots more at halftime, but right now we'll pause for these messages. Part of this game, I'm really surprised that Syracuse, with the year they've had, they've come out and left the ball on the ground. Well, we'll have to see what Dick McPherson will say to his troops at halftime. Can't be very happy about the fact they fumbled seven times and lost three of them. In the meantime, it's been a great season of CFA college football right here on ESPN. And headed for the Cherry Bowl against the University of Maryland. Around the short end of the bowlless West Virginia Mountaineers. Two field goals by Charlie Bauman from 29 and 27 yards. He missed from 30, and it looked like the Orangemen had something going. But twice they got down inside the 20 of West Virginia, and twice they fumbled the ball away. In fact, 
three fumbles they lost in the first half and two fumbles David have been chalked up to the seven that we had those two that went out of bounds so they actually fumbled the ball nine times and lost three of them here is the kickoff to start the second half it is Tom Kane for the Orangemen fields it inside the five dances to the 18 and that's where he'll be down the halftime statistics pretty much favor as you would expect West Virginia despite the fact that Syracuse actually out first down them McPherson was brilliant passing the football eight out of nine Timko four out of six big edge in the passing yardage look at the rushing yardage though almost double for the Mountaineers turnovers one against West Virginia but those three turnovers chalked up against Syracuse two of them inside the 20 yard line McPherson sends Schwedes wide to the left but goes on a misdirection play to the big tailback Roland Grimes he cracks it across the 30 picks up the first down at the 32 yard line as far as Syracuse possessions are concerned not very well first drive ended with a punt after five plays second drive they punted the ball after six plays then the first fumble occurred then on the next drive inside the 20 at the 16 the next drive at the 15 they fumbled the ball away and then another punt so it was a very inopportunistic first half for the Orangemen. Ziano motions across on first and ten. McPherson rolls out pressure pulls it down gets a block and goes out of bounds across the 40 close to first down yardage for Syracuse once again. McPherson again shows a great athlete he is and he gets out outside of containment gets close to a first down. But Jim, the score is only six to nothing. It could come back to haunt the West Virginia offense if they could not convert good field position into points. McPherson, the leading ball carrier, 15 rushes, 57 yards. High pro set. Siano wide to the left side. It goes to the big fullback, Roland Grimes again, and he stood up by the nose tackle, David Grant. Grant is 6'4", 267 out of Bellevue, New Jersey. And Jeff Lucas, the left tackle, 6'7", 282 out of Hackensack, New Jersey. So a couple of young men who grew up not too far from Newark Airport in there on the tackle. You know Newark Airport pretty well. Better than I want to. Third and a short two. Full house backfield. Looks like Woody Hayes, Ohio State backfield. Blocking over on the right side by Doug Marone and Chris Barnes in the grasp of Derek Christian. That should be very close to first down yardage. It looks like it's just shy. What do you do now if you're Dick McPherson? Big decision. If he punts, he can he can bury West Virginia in poor field position. The crowd sure wants him to go for it, but he's going to go ahead and punt. I think a good decision because his defense is playing well. It's still early in the second half. His defense has kept his, his Syracuse team out of trouble all night. Well, let's see if they might put the fake punt on. Dick McPherson said he's got a couple of trick plays. He runs out of punt formation. One of them is a pass that looks like a punt. It's a rainbow. They do that when they get down in deep. Harvey Smith. It bounces inside the 20, and the Orangemen should come out of this in great shape. mistake on specialty teams against the West Virginia Mountaineers. David Hum, why didn't he catch the ball? Well, this is a real mistake. He had a chance to fair catch this ball on the 20-yard line. A good job of pressure by the Syracuse coverage team. There it looked like he could have caught the ball easily. A big mistake. So the Mountaineers lead 6-0, but they're backed up looking at their own end zone. since 1955 and Syracuse leads it 19 to 13 leading in the game the Mountaineers and not much doing for Gay around that left side he cracks it up across the 10 yard line near the 12 West Virginia started at their own 20 yard line they drove down deep into Syracuse territory Bauman connected from 29 yards out then on their third possession a 27 yard field goal he missed from 30 and the score stood six nothing and that's where we are right now with about 12 and a half left to go in this third quarter. Timko, a quick hitter, goes nowhere. That is John Gay once again, number 46, the big fullback. Good along the ball lines of a bowling ball, six foot, 220 pounds, and it brings up third and be careful, Tom. Third and be careful in a big defensive series for this Syracuse defense. They've kept their team in the 
game all night. They really need a big play here. Third down and three. Do you put the ball up? Well, West Virginia's been successful running. We'll see what they do. Play action fake. Hemsko unloads. Got his man, and he's got a first down. Tommy Gray, the leading ball carrier and the leading receiver in the grasp of Jeff Mangrum. Tommy Gray had 111 carries, 537 yards, but he also led the Mountaineers with 24 receptions for 220 yards. And he gets isolated here up against the linebacker, comes up with a key catch. Third down and three. You go to your best player. They're a good job of finding Tom Gray and getting the first down. They spot the ball just shy of the 18. Motion across. Kempko goes the other way. Fires it on the rope and behind Keith Wynn. Wynn was open at the 31-yard line. Now, you never threw the ball behind an open receiver when you played in Nebraska, did you? Well, I never really threw that hard. That time, Timco just seemed to put too much on the ball. Or that far. Watch Pigeon on the right of your screen. He takes the fake, and then he gets back into the play. But here, Timco, he throws the ball so hard, and it's behind when he doesn't have a chance to catch it. So it's second down and 10. Coming out wide to the right side, Grantis Bell, the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, deployed wide to the top of the screen. That is number 81, Keith Wynn. A little delay. It goes to Tommy Gray, and Gray gets stacked up for a loss of one. Ted Gregory, the nose tackle, met him head on. Ted Gregory, a player that the Syracuse defensive staff just thinks is a tremendous player after Tim Green, and they think Tim Green has made this kid a better player with Gregory just the availability of Green to help him. Gregory started every game last year. He's emerging into his own because Tim Green is alongside. Gregory was a co-captain on his high school football and wrestling team. East Islip High School up in New York. Third and 11. Wide to the right. Bottom of the screen, Grantis Bell. Gary Basil, the sophomore, in motion across, and perhaps the Orangeman will get a break here. West Virginia took too much time. That'll change the play call substantially. It'll definitely change it. will make it third down and 16. Deep in their own territory. Here's where Timko has to protect the ball if they throw. Timko, five out of eight, 42 yards in Late passing game. so far. Offense, third down. And again, Timko is not the best passer on the West Virginia roster. And not the best runner, but the guy that moves the ball the best. And that's what Don Nealon likes. Coach said it's almost inexplainable because uh, the team just likes to rally around Timko. He's not the good passer, he's not the true leader, but he gets out there and there's a little electricity in the huddle. Motion across by Grantis Bell. Airborne goes Timko, fires downfield, it's incomplete. Pressure by Jerry Kimmel. Watch how close Kimmel comes to sacking Timko inside the five. Watch the right side of your screen there. Kimmel comes in. Timko, a good job of just standing in the pocket and making sure he throws the ball long enough that if his, play, his player can't get it, the defense of Syracuse can't either. Scott Twaites is back deep. Here's a man who averages over 40 yards per punt, and he hangs it high. It's a beauty. It backs Twaites up to the 35. They set up the wall, and Twaites is off to the races. Twaities, whose dad was an All-American here back in 59 with perhaps the game's big play. A 53-yard punt, a 36-yard return. And watch the block by 94, Paul Fraze. You hear the athletic ability of Swades. Look at him cut back. So the Orangemen with good field position once again. They fumbled nine times. They've lost three. The Carrier Dome is rocking and socking now after that 36-yard punt return by Scott Schwedes. McPherson bends in. First and 10 at the 27 of the Mountaineers. McPherson unloads. Seattle's got it. Out of bounds. They rule Seattle out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Now, he was knocked out of bounds by the defensive player. Would he have come down in bounds? What do you think? Here we'll see McPherson's dangerous getting outside. He's going to throw over number nine, Larry Holly. Dave Lockwood is going to hit him. That looks like a reception in bounds, even though his left foot comes down out of bounds. That definitely looked like a reception. 
give you the stats on McPherson. Eight out of nine, 96 yards passing, 15 rushes, 57 yards, and his team trails fifth, six to nothing. Six nothing, Mountaineers. A little counter the other way, and it goes to Byron Abraham, the sophomore out of Utica, New York, a 200 pounder, and the tackle made by Derek Christian. Abraham had some designs of big things with the University of Notre Dame. Came to Syracuse. He's a finesse runner, according to McPherson, the coach. Also catches the ball very well. Notre Dame High School, football and baseball player. Third down and six. Siano, top of the screen. Schwede's to the bottom. Blitz is on. McPherson. Down he goes at the 33. Derek Christian. Well, you talk about Tim Green on the other side. Derek Christian has been brilliant for the Mountaineers. Well, great coverage by the West Virginia secondary to set the big play up by Derek Christian. You see McPherson look to his right, look underneath. He looks left. Just too much time. Usually he'll take this up field, but there he doesn't have an opportunity. Derek Christian right in his face. And disdaining the field goal now is Dick McPherson, the head coach. So on fourth and 15, they need a big play. You would expect double coverage on Ciano and on Schwede. Ciano drags his foot at the 15, and they'll give him this one. Dave Lockwood, who knocked him out of bounds on the previous catch that was ruled incomplete. A great dragging catch. Watch the leg of Ciano. Mike Ciano, six foot four, a great route runner. Here just runs a square out. Watch the concentration. Watch him drag his feet. Easily reception. Great play. Same pattern. This time, maybe the make good. First and ten. Orangeman, they trail by six. Swades wide to the left side. Ciano top of the screen. The freeze option, and nobody was frozen on that play. Grimes gets hammered by Christian. They might have to start double teaming Christian. He's been brilliant. Christian's had a great game, but what a great play on fourth down and 15 by McPherson and by Mike Ciano. Ciano only runs a 4-7-40, and he's not sure. We talked to him yesterday what the pro scouts think of him. He said, we'll wait till draft day. Ask him if he had an idol in the National Football League. He grew up in Philadelphia. He said no. Second and 11. McPherson. Down he goes at the 20. It was a counter play. And staying at home, Jeff Lucas, number 99, 6'7", 282, out of Hackensack, New Jersey. McPherson here on the option. You see the dive fake there. He takes it down the field. Jeff Lucas just there too fast. McPherson's made some bad pitches on situations like there. At least he protected the ball right there. Now, on that last third down play, the one they went to Ciano on, Schwedes was open on a little drag over the middle. It was a little bit of a delay, almost a pick pattern. He was open underneath. They might come back, work it to Ciano, who's lined up wide to the left. McPherson, pump fake, down he goes, and it's a sack. No surprise, the number is number... 49. It's Christian. not only a sack, but watch number 49 on the left of your screen. McPherson has to pull the ball down. Tell me he doesn't pay the price for doing that. So now we will see the field goal team. This will be a 41-yard effort. Hash mark to the far side. It is Don McCauley, 16 out of 20. His longest is 49. The sidewinder, snap is down, spot is up, and it is. Way through the third quarter, the Orangemen are on the board. They've cut that deficit in half. There's our time left in quarter number three, and the Orangemen are finally on the board after that 41-yard effort by Don McCauley. Haven't been that many scoring opportunities. There's a the young man. Boy, has he got a career coming up in the National Football League. Well, he's following a great kicker, Gary Anderson, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and uh, McPherson said this kid is just a great performer for them off, however, for Syracuse, Tim Besley, and you saw that shot. McCauley is not happy, and that's putting it mildly. I'd say that's paraphrasing what the coaches said. It is high. It is end over end. It's Tony Johnson, five yards deep. Let's check that scoring drive by the Orangemen that came with 7.19 left in the third quarter. Of course, the big third down play on third and 
15 was the pass completion to Siano. They mixed it up pretty well. And that 41-yard effort by McCauley. Again, he's got that good cannon for a right leg, the sidewinder, his longest 49 yards. So the West Virginia offense trots on out. They look at first and 10 from their own 20. Wide receivers left and right. Gay and Gray are the back split out. Kimpko wants to go airmail. Instead, we'll keep it on the ground. Drives down to the 25-yard line. The grasp of Timmy Pigeon. I think we've got Pigeon on isolation for you. Watch here, number 54. Watch the right of your screen. He takes the fake. He takes the fullback through the, through the line here. Makes a good job of coming up and holding Timpko. Does he hit hard or what? But a good play by Temko to pick up five yards. Pigeon has really come into his own this season. He's the kind of a young man who likes to knock your block off. Captain his football team two years in high school. There goes Hollifield. And he kind of dived forward up to the 28-yard line. Boy, that's the way you like to see a runner go behind his blockers, low and close to the ground. Tim Pigeon again came up with a tackle. And watch. Joswiak, 77, on the All-American Green, 72. Now, Green is 6'2", 250, and look how small he looks against Brian Joswiak, who's 6'6", 290 pounds. Hollifield, a great job. He's coming off a knee injury and really running hard. You get the idea those two will meet again in the National Football League. Many times. Third and two, a dive over the middle. First down for Hollifield. Loose football, and Syracuse gets it. Gardner Cooper. Let's watch 54, Timmy Pigeon, and Tim Green, 72. Here comes Hollifield. The ball stripped loose by Cooper and Doug Pena. Pena strips the ball loose, and Gardner comes up with it. Cooper Gardner. So, from the 34-yard line, the Orangemen on fire. Great field position. Twaities wide to the left. Siano, top of the screen. I process. It's Grimes and Abraham. Grimes behind the blocking on the left side of Brodsky, the big tackle. Stopped for a pickup of three. It brings up second down and seven. Live by the turnover, die by the turnover. Well, the turnover's been a big factor in this game here. Syracuse gets the ball in good field position. West Virginia's letting this crowd back into the game. We didn't hear him much in the first half. Again, David, it seems as if McPherson could pass almost at will against West Virginia, and I'm very surprised that Dick McPherson has kept it on the ground running that freeze option. Why not turn your quarterback loose? Well, I'm sure the receivers and Don McPherson are going saying, Coach, let us put it up. Walter Mosley stumbles to the 35-yard line. Again, my point. You've got it first and 10. You've just come up with a big play at your opponent's 34-yard line. Now you've run two dive plays into the... He looks like he can't believe what's being called either. Wait a minute. Who's running the boat here? Macaulay's got a strong leg, but they need to pick up some yardage, if not a first down on this play. Third and 11. Siano over the middle. Swady. There was bumping at the 17-yard line. Swades wants pass interference, but I think that was a misread between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Well, it looked like Swades was trying to run a corner here. We're going to get a wide shot on the replay. Watch the top of your screen. Swades runs the post, then the corner. Number four, Stacy Smith, gets his left arm. But look at the ball. is so far outside with no opportunity to catch. The official didn't throw a flag. A good call an uncatchable ball and rather than McCauley and a long long field goal try we'll see Jimmy Fox now this is the situation in the field that Fox could pass the ball there is nobody back deep so they're not looking for a punt Fox is down it'll be a roughing the kicker call against West Virginia Freddie Smalls got to Fox West Virginia had nobody back Everybody was up. They never thought that Fox was going to cut the football. And Smalls went crashing through. And that is the most costly mistake. Watch right side of the screen. Here comes Smalls. Smalls complains that he was blocked into him right there. He was pushed. We just saw the very end of it by number 99, Roger Remo. But a big break for Syracuse. Watch the left of your screen. Roger Remo 
Fred Smalls right there. They could call that blocking Smalls into the kicker, and I think they should have. Well, he was pushed, but when Smalls jumped up to try to get around the blocker, he was already airborne, and he did have forward momentum. So it's a judgment call on the part of the official. It is a costly call against West Virginia, and I'm frankly very surprised that Coach McPherson, that was a perfect situation. They did not have West Virginia, anybody back in the secondary. All you had to do was get one man out there and have Fox throw the pass. I'm sure the reason they didn't was because it's, they don't have an audible call on a punt formation. Blitz is on. Swadey's in the end zone. Touchdown! those of you who have been watching Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, the Orangemen of Syracuse right back in this football game have just taken the lead. They played the entire first half without scoring. Then a 41-yard field goal by Don McCauley. That cut the deficit to just three. And after a turnover against the Mountaineers, a very costly roughing the kicker call, and on the next play, a scoring strike for McPherson. It's Wadey. The point after by McCauley is up and good, and the Orangemen, who were shut out and trailed 6-0, have now taken a 10-6 lead. Let's go back and watch McPherson's 12th touchdown pass and watch Swades, who gets free and beats Lockwood. Don McPherson makes a great throw here. Swades has to concentrate on the ball, also on keeping his feet in bounds. There you saw his right foot down in bounds. A great catch to beat 41 Dave Lockwood. Watch McPherson's reaction after the catch by Scott Swades. Says, all right, we're back in front. So after trailing six to nothing, let's take another look at the catch by Scott Swades. His dad was an All-American here in 59. Swades uses his body. You can see his foot come down and down. The great catch. Not bad coverage by Lockwood. A great effort by Swades. The Orangemen are up by four. Let's go back to Jim Simpson. Syracuse, the Orangemen lead by four. Back with the Syracuse kickoff after these messages. Twister, single season Syracuse record. Say most, most, say most quickly three times. Most quickly, most quickly. Uh, never mind. <laughs> From the 19 yard line, Timko back to. He's got Hollifield. And Hollifield dances up to the 30 yard line. In the grasp of Cooper Gardner, the strong side safety, the freshman out of West Haven, Connecticut. You can see the brace there on Hollifield's right leg. Here he just checks through. He's going to make a great move on Tim Pigeon, who's a real short sure tackler. He makes Pigeon miss there. Rudy Reed will come out of the right of your screen and make a good tackle. Coming in late into the play is number 83, Gary Basil, the tight end. They had to tell him the play. He missed the huddle. Hollifield on a dive right over the center, blocking up front by Dave Griffin. West Dove in there on the coverage. Griffith, the center, 6 4. 260. Viking side. Second down and seven. Wide to the right side. Calvin Phillips. White top of the screen. Baxter split. Hollifield along with John Gay. And John Gay tracks across the right side up to the 38 yard line and the grasp of West Dove, number 71, once again. We'll have an isolation here. You can see the nose. Rudy Reed there comes up. Watch the play. He breaks the tackle. West Dove from the left, right left of your screen makes a good play. West Dove chose to play here at Syracuse against a career at Harvard and Yale. Dick McPherson said that shows how bright he was. Hollifield clears air traffic control, and he gets the first down. Rudy Reed on the stop but blocking over on that right side by Scott Saylor, seven. And watch as Hollifield gets those flaps down. He's been de-iced, and he gets the first down. This kid is a great athlete. He was hurt earlier in the year. He's missed the last couple games with a knee injury. He's come in and played inspired football. He's one of the guys that's performing for West Virginia here in the second half. Ten unanswered points by the Orangemen, but the West Virginia Mountaineers showing their mettle. They're coming back with a drive of their own. Timco, airborne. Look, fires over the middle, got his man, first down for the Mountaineers. Up at the 41-yard line, that's Harvey Smith on a post pattern. The ribs 
were exposed. The receivers hate it, but he drilled it on a rope. Timko did. Watch the catch by Harvey Smith. This is unbelievable. The ball's thrown behind him and hard. Cooper Gardner comes in and puts a tremendous hit on him. Great concentration. What a difficult catch to make. The ball is thrown behind you. You're airborne. Your body is twisting and spinning, and it's backwards, and then you get popped by the secondary. First and ten. West Virginia, 2.26 to go in the third quarter. Nothing doing. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage. John Hollifield in the grasp of the All-America, Tim Green. Green this year, three tackles against Mississippi State. Against Virginia Tech, he had eight. He had eight against Temple. 37 so far in the season. He just keeps adding All-America honors, Timmy Green does. And again, that decision whether to play pro football or continue his study at Oxford. Tremendous man. Second down, 10 yards to go. Motion across by Robert White. Timko blitzes on. Green doesn't get him. Timko, he's got his man of the 27. Out of bounds goes Calvin Phillips, the freshman out of Boynton Beach, Florida. And Timko suddenly is heating up. Don Nalen said this is the guy that can move the club for him. He's going to get away from Tim Green here. And then on the left, West Cove he makes a great throw under pressure. Calvin Miller Phillips, good concentration there. Keeps his feet down. Makes a good leg. Timko, 8 out of 12, 85 yards, and a very impressive drive after West Virginia fell behind 10 to 6. Backs are split. It goes to the big fullback, John Gay, out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania. He cracks it inside the 25-yard line. Right in the center of the stack is Ted Gregory, the nose guard for the Orangemen of Syracuse, a sophomore. 6'1", 252. In the yard is 24. There is Dick McPherson, who thought he had stolen this football game, at least the momentum factor, right back. Across the way, Don Nealon. This is his bowl game. The Aloha Bowl said thanks, but no thanks. Second down, nine yards to go. Underneath is Hollifield. Look out. First and goal, Mountaineers at the six-yard line of Syracuse. David Lee, the nickelback, but Hollifield is just too quick. Watch the dancing feet by John Hollifield. Watch John Hollifield from the left of your screen. He makes Pena miss right here. He makes Cooper Gardner miss right there with a spinning run. The great play Hollifield, who's their third back in the depth chart, has come in and played great. At the five-yard line goes Tom Gray, the West Virginia Mountaineers leading ball carrier, and Ted Gregory is there again. And we'll go back to the story. Gregory is getting better because he's playing alongside the All-American Tim Green. Tim Green gets double time a lot of you know, double teamed a lot of the time, and at least Ted Gregory all by himself. He's made some great plays tonight. 25, 24, 23 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And Tim Green exalting the crowd now to get up and help the Orangemen out. Make some noise indoors at the carrier dome. Close to the goal line, but not close enough, goes John Gay, the fullback. Timmy Pigeon stops the touchdown. Watch from ground level. John Gay hard running. Watch him get behind his shoulder pads. He'll break a tackle, spin around, and almost get into the end zone. He hits, he hits the ground there and loses the ball, but you can't lose on him when you hit the ground. 10-6 Syracuse, but the Mountaineers are knocking on the Orangemen's door. Fourth quarter coming up. Along with Dave Hum, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. It has been a good game, as most have in the 33-year meeting. Thank you, Jim Simpson. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in the Snow Bowl out there. We're indoors at the Carrier Dome. Lots of snow and powdery white stuff outside. Things have heated up. Ten unanswered points by Syracuse. They have taken a 10-6 lead. But the Mountaineers have marched right back. A very impressive drive. It's third and goal from the one. And the Orangemen jumped off sides. Now, were they drawn off sides? Did the All-American tackle Brian Joswiak jump? Well, let's check in with the referee and find out. The Carrier Dome has certainly come alive since those 10 straight points by the Orangemen. Well, that changes the play call considerably. Big mistake by the West Virginia offense. They've let this crowd back into the game. Looked like Joe's react jumped right there. They're all American. 
making Mike Timko very upset. Totally changes their play calling down here right now. Ball start, offense, third down. Ray Bauer, our referee, so instead of third and goal from the one, third and goal from the six. Now you would expect some kind of play option fake. Timko perhaps to the wide side. It's a situation where they're going to have to throw. Great effort by Mike Timko to get the ball to Brian McAllister, but you can see the Orangeman defense fired up. It was a late developing play designed to get the defense going to the right. Timko came back to the near side, but there are nothing but three orange jerseys facing Timko, and no receivers got out. I'm sure this was a play where Timko wanted to fake the run. There he falls down, makes a good throw before he's down. Cooper Gardner's going to come up and make a great stop. Timmy Green putting the pressure on Timko. So now, it will be number eight. He has already had two field goals. Charlie Bowman has. This is a chip shot. It is up, and it is good. But there's a penalty flag to be checked out. Charlie Bowman, who is connected from 29 and 27 yards. He missed a 30-yarder earlier, trying to draw the Mountaineers to within one. Let's check the penalty call. It's against West Virginia. Boy, from third and goal at the one, they are going the wrong direction. Well, pen penalties kill you. Also, turnovers. We've seen a lot of turnovers tonight. They're a real costly penalty in third and one. Don Nealon, in his sixth season as the head coach at West Virginia, has led the Mountaineers to four straight bowl appearances. First, it was the Blue Bonnet Bowl, the Hall of Fame Bowl, the Gator Bowl, and, of course, that big upset win in the Peach Bowl. But this year, the Aloha Bowl said they didn't want West Virginia. It is a 15-yard penalty. Illegal participation, 15 yards, fourth down. So it is no longer a chip shot for Charlie Bowman. He came into the game 12 out of 16 in the field goal department. He's two out of three here tonight. And that chip shot has suddenly become a 38-yard effort. Dick McPherson of the Syracuse Orange for now, he wants a timeout, and he wants to make some personnel substitution. So we have 14-12 left to go in this football game. Let's rejoin the Sooners and the Cowpokes. Here again, Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. Dick McPherson was all the way out on the field screaming at Raymond Bauer, the referee, and asking for an explanation. Line of scrimmage remains the same. The 21-yard line, hash mark far side. It's a 38-yard effort for Charlie Bowman. Seven out of nine from this distance, and it's on its way, and it is no good. Pressure by Chris Ingram, number 24. I don't know if Ingram got a piece of it. It started out cleanly, and then it did a little dipsy doodle to the left. Looked like one of your golf shots. Here, Bowman missed one earlier. Here, he misses another one. But again, it was the mistake, the illegal participation that moved him back. Watch Bowman. Remember, he's only a freshman. You can see on the left of your screen, 24, Chris Ingram, he's been close to blocking them all night. That might have been in Bowman's mind. 14.07 left to go in this game. The Orangemen lead it by four. They start from their own 21. High pro set. Hand off to the tailback, Robert Drummond. And some boos from the crowd. And I think the crowd is wondering what I'm wondering. Why McPherson, who has been brilliant here tonight, doesn't throw the football. It's a little early to go into your shell and try and sit on a four-point lead. A lot of times with four, almost 14 minutes left in the game, a team will go in their shell and then have to come back later and throw, and they've already put the offense away, so you don't want to get too complacent right now. He's already set the single-season Syracuse record for touchdown. Seattle's got the first down. Dave Lockwood bumps him out of bounds, and a personal foul face mask will be called on top of the yardage already gained. Boy, Ciano's been giving that young freshman a clinic here this evening. Well, McPherson does a good job. Again, it's a semi-roll. We'll watch him plant his feet. But when you're a defensive secondary, who do you double? Swades or Ciano? It's hard to, to know. You're good form by McPherson. Watch Ciano on the left of your screen. Watch Dave Lockwood. The right, his right hand gets caught in the face mask. Clearly a face mask. Dave, you might wonder, if you're a West Virginia fan, why they wouldn't start coming up and doubling Ciano and doubling Schwedes. But as soon as you do that, what happens? Well, they've got a great tight end in Jim Tate. Jim's got good speed, who can run. Face mask. And McPherson Defense. can run. That's right. Five yards. First down. They run out of that 
freeze option and McPherson being the leading ball carrier as soon as the corners come up and double and that's what concerned Don Nealon at the hotel this morning. 38 yard line first and 10 it goes to the big fullback and Roland Grimes just drives up to the 44 and a half yard line. 13 13 left to go Derek Christian number 49 came up with his 16th tackle in this game. You think he's not having a career here tonight? This West Virginia defense is dominated by their linebackers. Their top four tacklers are their linebackers. Second down, long three. Airborne goes McPherson, fires to Schwede's first down. They are really working over Dave Lockwood, the freshman. He's going to be seeing number 16 and number 14 in his dreams tonight. Dave Lockwood's been busy, but right there, Don McPherson, he, he stood in the pocket and made a great throw. I know head coach Dick McPherson would like nothing better but a long time consuming drive with a touchdown to make West Virginia score twice to beat him. He might even breathe a little easier with a field goal. There goes Roland Grimes, and he gets a pickup of about one in the grass. Jeff Lucas, number 99, the junior linebacker, 6'7", 292, out of Hackensack. They call him Big Luke. Don Nealon at the hotel this morning, sitting by the pool, said, boy, the kids on our team just love that man, Jeff Lucas. They run a little gong show, the Mountaineers do, and Jeff Lucas is the host. He's the MC. He's the Chuck Barris of the Mountaineers. Timeout down in the field. 12.05 left to go. The Orangemen came back with 10 unanswered points. Syracuse leads by four. Welcome back to Syracuse. The Orangemen protecting that four-point lead. Would like to put at least three more up. McPherson, freeze option, back pedals. Man open over the middle. Swades and he can't get it. Wide open on a post pattern at the 30-yard line. And McPherson, McFire. <laughs> Well, Swades is wide open right here, and in the right of your screen, Travis Curtis is going to come up to hit him, and the ball goes right by him. Watch in the right of your screen, Travis Curtis, and he doesn't even see it. Behind him was Mike Ciano. The fire. Third and nine. Ciano wide to the right, Swades wide to the left. On the option, McPherson pulls it down, dives to the 39, and there was a late hit. Might have been piling on, no flag was thrown, and he is about two and a half yards shy of first down yardage. Larry Holly, the junior out of Denora Park, Pennsylvania, came piling on. Do you think this might have been a late hit? Well, let's see. I'll tell you, McPherson puts his head down. No, it wasn't. Derek Christian, definitely Fred Smalls flying in there right there. Could have been a late hit. The punt team is on. They disdain the field goal try. It's Jimmy Fox. I think it's time now for the fake punt. Leading by four, I'll bet they kick. Fox hangs it high. The Orangemen signal for the... Uh, they bat it back inside the five. Stacy Smith let it go. And Syracuse comes up with a great play. Jeff Buskirk. Watch the special team. Watch 51, David Sapienza knocks it back. Off 27, Jeff Busker. So, with 11-10 left, the Mountaineers backed up in the shadow of their own end zone. You see our time left here at the Carrier Dome. They're making a lot of noise, the Orangemen faithful. I'd say about a third are decked out in those bright orange sweaters. They're all over the city. Timsko gives to Hollifield, and Hollifield gives no ground. It is Jerry Kimmel, the left defensive end, a tackle in the nose guard last year, played linebacker on the inside side in his freshman season. Big play. Great ground angle right here. John Hollyfield, watch out of the right of your screen, 96, Jerry Kimmel. Boom, puts a stop on him right there. Lucky that he hung onto the football. You can see Tim Green try to wrestle the ball loose. will pull it down and gets tripped up from behind. Ted Gregory, 93, the nose tackle, chased him down at the six-yard line. Ted 
Gregory makes a great play right here. Timbo rolls right to try to throw deep. Great angle he fakes to Hollifield. He get out, gets outside. Watch from the left of your screen. Nose guard Ted Gregory's going to make a great tackle and a big stop. That was a big stop because if he got around Gregory, he had room to ramble. It's third. Third down and nine yards to go. Coming out wide to the left side. Robert White. Kimpko. Draw. Gives to Hollifield. Bounces off a couple of Orangemen. Gets sandwiched down at the nine-yard line. They're on their feet at the Carrier Dome. Pressure punt coming up now for the senior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. There is what Steve has done. One of the premier punters in the nation. Off the side of his foot. This one will be spotted at the 31-yard line. Pressure by Doug Pena, but they were very careful not to rough the kicker. Watch as if you're Steve Sapiric. A 23-yard kick. It just slithered off the right side of his foot. Well, he knows he's deep in his own territory, kicking from his own end zone. Watch Doug Pena from the right. But watch how careful he was not to get a roughing the kicker call. That call against West Virginia turned this football game around. 9.09 left to go. The Orangemen by four. They've got it at the 31 of West Virginia. McPherson bends in. Siano wide right. They go instead to big number 36, Robert Drummond. Drummond breaks the tackle and spins down to the 25. They had him stacked for a loss of six. Keeps those knees and legs turning, goes Robert Drummond. Robert Drummond never gives up here. He's going to break a tackle by Mike Herzog, number 51. Watch Herzog spin around. Grabs him there, number 50, Matt Smith also. Great effort by Robert Drummond. And when you look at that kind of an effort from the young freshman, it's almost impossible to imagine that they want to convert him to a wide receiver next year. But those are the plans. Second down, a short five yards to go. McPherson can pull it down. Watsiano got him, but it's out of bounds. Dave Lockwood on the coverage. Pretty good effort that time by Lockwood. He's been beaten for a touchdown. The ball was misfired. Now, you don't think Schwedes will go back to the huddle and say, I had a little touchdown on the drag over the middle. I was wide open. Well, I think they want to do something with McPherson to get him outside because it's, right now it's only third down and five where if there's nobody open, he can take it up the field and get that first down. They are well within the range of McCauley, the field goal kicker. They would like the touchdown. Third and five. Blitz is on. McPherson reads it, fires, and it is incomplete. Wadey's on the post pattern. David Grant, the middle guard, 6'4", 267, out of Belleville, New Jersey, right there, putting all kinds of pressure on McPherson. Now we'll see McCauley. He is one of the premier place kickers in the country. Out of East Islip, New York. He'll be playing in the Cherry Bowl, then he goes to the Blue-Gray Bowl. He's the best kicker, Dick McPherson says, since Gary Anderson. 17 of 21 this year. Out of the hold of Mike Kimmitz. Don McCauley snaps, spot it's on its way, and it is partially blocked. 8.15 left to go, and this one's got a long way to go. The Orangemen by four. Don't go away. Back to the Carrier Dome with the Mountaineers drive after these messages. quarterback and former NFL quarterback Dave Hum. I'm Jim Kelly and we hope you're enjoying this one live on ESPN. Don't go away. The Mountaineers are down by just four and there's a penalty flag down because Ted Gregory jumped offside. Now was he drawn offside? Jim just like you said on the break how many times have you seen a field goal that could have put the team in command miss the field goal and the other team come back and make a big drive and score to, to win the game? An awful lot because it's a letdown, an emotional letdown for the team that thought they had the game salted away. Dead ball foul, encroachment, defense, first and five. This is a great position for West Virginia. First down and five. They've got some downs they can play with, some throwaway downs. They can go deep or use some of their trick plays. 
Timmy Green trying to get the crowd chanting again. Hollifield, big hole on the right side, blocking there by Scott Saylor, who's 6'5", 285, out of Whitehall, Pennsylvania, and West Dove, 6'6", 260, helped out by Timmy Pigeon, came up to make the tackle. West Dove, a man we were talking about, he chose to play his football here at Syracuse instead of Harvard and Yale. Had an excellent spring. Coaches say he's got the size and the speed to be a big factor. He hasn't yet taken charge. Needs to be a little bit more aggressive. Well, the Orangemen defense getting aggressive right there. John Gay, number 46, met head-on by Timmy Pigeon. And by Timmy Green. Watch the perfect form of Tim Pigeon, a former fullback in high school. Lowers his head and just... Pushes 46 John Gay right back into the backfield. David Holmes, the freshman nickelback out of Burlington, New Jersey, number 38, checks in, anticipating pass on second down and eight. Timko in trouble, and that's it. Nothing doing at the 37 yard line. Jerry Kimmel, number 96, the defensive left tackle, who was a co captain on his high school football and basketball team up in Kirkwood, New York on the tackle they say of Kimmel he's got great technique what do the coaches mean when they say that well technique every defensive lineman and every defensive coach coaches certain te techniques as far as rushing and tackling and, and uh, schemes they use Kimmel is a real disciplined player and the coaches love him big third down play here third and 11 Pimpko sends Robert White wide to the left play action fake Pimpko in trouble Pimpko is down Loss of 10, Ted Gregory, the nose guard, 76, second, 93, Gregory, and 71, West Dove. Watch Ted Gregory from the right and West Dove from the left. Timko has plenty of time early, but good coverage by the Syracuse defensive backs. No place to go. It has been a busy evening for that man. Punter extraordinaire, Steve Sapiric. His last one was only... 23 yards after being pressured. Swadies looks for the wall, gets outside. He broke the big one earlier to set up the go-ahead touchdown and good field position for the Orangemen of Syracuse with 6.04 left to go. They are bowl bound to the Cherry Bowl at the Superdome Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan. Next week, live CFA college football returns here on ESPN. Robbie Bosco, the quarterback for the defending NCAA champion Cougars. He'll be tossing rainbows against the rainbows. It's December 7th, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific, right here on ESPN. Well, do you play it conservative now? Now with 6.04 to go. Dive play to the fullback, Roland Grimes. I think the way that the defense of Syracuse is playing, you're not going to see the Orangemen taking too many chances. No, you're not. But I, still with 6.04 to go, you'd like to get a good drive, use the clock, and get a score. Again, this is the 33rd meeting between Syracuse and West Virginia. The Orangemen holding a 19-13 lead. They've played yearly since 1955. The series started back in 45. It's not been since 1980 when Syracuse won in Morgantown that the visiting team has been able to post a victory. McPherson, he's got his man in a diving catch at the 42-yard line by Scott Schwedes, who's got the only touchdown reception of the game. Watch how far he drives the defensive back. Watch, you won't even see the defensive back in the picture he's so far back. Schwedes just goes down a little hook. You can see there. Look at the respect that Lockwood gives him. Third so down. The first down, third down and two. This is where McPherson is so dangerous. He can pass. He's 13 of 19. He can run. 19 carries, 47 yards. They need two to keep the drive alive. The Mountaineers get the ball back. Derek Christensen, a great defensive effort. We have seen some strong inside linebacking play on both sides of the football. Well, Derek Christian will come out of the right of your screen, a little fake to the left. Watch Derek Christian and Van Richardson put great pressure. Watch it, almost a late hit on Van Richardson, 37. Real close to a late hit. Had a little knee to the helmet. Back to do the punting. 
Jim Fox out of Newington, Connecticut, and Harvey Smith, who's been erratic at best, standing at his own 25. Fox hangs it high, hoping for some kind of a turnover. Smith will field, runs it back, breaks the tackle, and dives across the 31-yard line. A 42-yard punt and a 7-yard return. Doug Pina, who's excelled on the specialty teams, down there on the coverage. A long way to go. Four minutes. The Mountaineers are away, and they need to get into the end zone. A field goal means nothing. Four minutes is a lot of time on that game clock. We'll see what happens. They expected Tim to go in 30 deep and run that. Let's go. This is the last game of the year for West Virginia. This is their bowl game after the Aloha Bowl said, no, thank you. Hollifield looks for the alley. Instead, he finds a couple of orange and blue jerseys. Timmy Pigeon, the first to get there, tried to turn the play inside. Interesting play call now, inside of 340 when uh, the ball is spotted. Are you surprised Timko didn't throw on first down? Well, that really is plenty of time because remember in college, every time you get a first down, the clock stops. And Hollifield's been playing great for uh, West Virginia the night. Syracuse on defensive, tied for 20th in scoring defense. They've shut out the West Virginia Mountaineers in the second half. Jerry Kimmel. Jerry Kimmel from the top of your screen. Number 57, Kevin Koch in the center will try to block him. He gets outside. Mike Timko never even sees him. Yeah. Mike Timko, 10 out of 14, 106 yards and one interception. In trouble now. It's third and 12. Spot the ball just across the 29-yard line of West Virginia. They must have a first down or Syracuse can just about run out the football. Yeah. Blitz is on. Timmy Green's got him. Green from the right side, Kimmel from the left side, like a pair of scissors, like a visor, and Timko had no chance. Watch Tim Green against Brian Jones. We have both All-Americans, a great play by Green. Watch how quick he gets outside. Jones, we have tries to throw him to the side, but almost a knee injury there by Mike Timko. Timko had no idea where he was. Someday, Timmy Green would like that shot in his highlight reel. He beat another All-American, Brian Joswiak, and beat him badly for a big play in this football game. Fair catch is signaled for by Scott Quaides, not risking any kind of a turnover. There's just 2.04 left to go in the football season for West Virginia. Of course, for the Syracuse Orange Men, it's on to the Cherry Bowl against Maryland. And one of the things that we touched on at the very top of the telecast, the very close relationship between head coach Dick McPherson of Syracuse and Don Nealon of West Virginia. They were assistants under Chuck Studley at the University of Cincinnati. They talk almost every week during the normal course of a football season, except the week of this game. They have not talked. Inside handoff, and it goes to Robert Drummond. How deep does that friendship between McPherson and Don Nealon go? They told us this week at practice that their friendship is so strong, they go back to before anybody made any money. They didn't have 10 cents for a cup of coffee. In fact, they pooled the money between them to borrow money to get one babysitter so they could take their wives out for pizza. 150 left to go in the football game. The Orangemen lead it by four. Second down and nine yards to go. The Orangemen of Syracuse have that four-point lead. West Virginia will be scratching and clawing and trying to force some kind of a turnover, trying to get the ball back for their offense, which has been shut out by the Syracuse defense here in the second half. Six to nothing at the halftime intermission. Two field goals by Charlie Bauman and West Virginia in total command. Nine fumbles by Syracuse. The Orangemen lost three of them. Very careful ball handling there. Did you see the way that McPherson stuck it right in the middle of the breadbasket of Roland Grimes? The Mountaineers want another timeout. Their season is slowly slipping away. The Orangemen lead by four with 1.44 left to go. Ten to six, the Orangemen headed for the Cherry Bowl. Do you think some of the Terps of Maryland are looking in tonight? wide right. Schwede's top of the screen on second down. Check it. Third down and nine. Third and nine. 
McPherson pulls it down, breaks it across midfield, but there's a penalty flag to be checked out. Probably holding against Syracuse, McPherson was about up to where he needed to be, the 41-yard line. Check at the 46-yard line for first down yardage. But Raymond Bauer says holding against Syracuse. And let's see if we can pick up the holding call. Watch the right side of the screen here. See if the nose guard wasn't grabbed a little bit. Watch number 61, Hans Werdeker comes in. David Grant, and I'm going to say uh, the leg lock, and we've seen that on ESPN Big Time Wrestling. Every Tuesday night. Well, if you're going to hold, get him good. Do it right. Holding. Offense. Ten yards. Third down. The Raiders practiced that, didn't you, when you were with Oakland? Can't give away any trade secrets. You won't say that. You're still friends with Al Davis. Third and 19. Best bet in the house is that McPherson will not throw the football. A lateral. Way shy of first down yardage. I'm surprised they even risked the lateral. Well, a mistake there by Robert Drummond. Also not keeping the ball inbound, stopping the clock. If you fumbled the ball nine times in the first half, would you lateral the ball? Drummond is down over at the Syracuse bench. He was hammered out of bounds at the 45-yard line by Stacy Smith, the uh, sophomore out of Akron, Ohio. Drummond only a freshman. That's a time when you really want to just get down on the ground, keep the clock running. They would have run another 30 seconds off this clock. Here's the end of the watch. Drummond against Travis Curtis. There, Curtis in the face mask. You can see where uh, Drummond hit his head on the turf. This is a fairly hard uh, surface here, artificial astroturf. So while they attend to Drummond over on the sideline, the punt return team trots out for West Virginia. Still 132 left. We're talking 92 seconds. And any kind of a decent return by number 88, Harvey Smith, out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, could set up the Mountaineers in good field position. Fox is back to punt. That is Jimmy Fox out of Newington, Connecticut. He is just a junior. McPherson said of Fox, he's one of the hardest workers on the team, and his punting has improved noticeably after last year. They're still attending to Robert Drummond over on the Syracuse sideline, and now they have moved Bob back about five yards out of the line of fire. Dick McPherson bending down, and he is more concerned with his young man, Mr. Drummond, than he is with a football game right now. And that goes to something that Don Nealon was telling us at the hotel this morning. The college football could use more men like Dick McPherson as head coach. Quite a compliment by Don Nealon for his friend Dick McPherson. And we got the same response from uh, McPherson's players, that he's honest, up front, and he respects and loves his players. They've been friends since they were assistants together at the University of Cincinnati. They didn't talk be until before the ball game. Fox didn't get all of it. Smith to the 25. There are 83 seconds left to go in the season for West Virginia. The Mountaineers trail by four. Remember, a field goal means absolutely nothing. Return, eight yards, falls at the 25-yard line. There is Scott Schwedes, his dad. Scott, of course, with those statistics, six receptions, 78 yards, the one touchdown, the difference in the ball game. He is the Hartford player of the game from the Hartford Insurance Company. Kimpko will have to put it up. Drop at the 26-yard line, and how Mike Kimpko got rid of the ball because Jerry Kimmel was hanging on the backside. Clock is stopped. I'm going to go back to Schwedes for just a second. His dad, Gary Schwedes, was a halfback in the single-wing formation back in 1959. He wore number 16, the same as his son Scott is wearing now, and Gary Schwedes was the captain of the last Syracuse National Championship team. And who was on that team, Hummer? A very famous guy, Ernie Davis. Second and 10. Kemp go for all of it. Looks, he's got his man at the 40-yard line. Number 88, Harvey Smith. Smith inside the 35. First and 10, West Virginia at the 32-yard line. David Lee, the senior cornerback, who had a bruised knee, who was questionable before the game. 
Schreiber was beaten on the play. What a great throw by Tim Cook. How Tim Cook got that ball off as he was being hit. A great catch by Harvey Smith and watch the run. He makes Cooper Gardner miss. David Holmes. They're 20. David Lee comes up. 65 seconds to go in the season. West Virginia, an out pattern, badly thrown by Timko. That will stop the clock. Now, his arm, in fairness to Mike Timko, might be bothering him after Kimmel deflected it two plays previously. Well, plus, he took a shot the last time he dropped back to throw. Second down. There is Don Nealon across the way. The player of the game, the Hartford Insurance player of the game for the Mountaineers is right there. And that is number 49, Derek Christian, outstanding linebacker. 6'4", 230. We have him with 16 solo tackles. Top of the screen, Granis Bell, wide to the near side. Goes number 82, Calvin Phillips. Timko unloads, and I didn't see a white jersey. It'll be a terribly late penalty flag thrown by Bauer, the referee. Intentionally grounding the ball, Kimmel, Gregory were putting pressure on Timko. Not much you can do about that. No, he had tremendous pressure. Uh, Timko did a good job of getting rid of that ball. The call was very late. He really had no other option. Gregory was right in his face. But David, as a former quarterback, you must know where your reads are. You must know where your safety valve man is and at least throw in that direction. Throw it into the tuba section, but have a jersey the same color in the vicinity. Watch him down. Third down. We'll see this from the end zone. Watch Mike Kimko drop back. You'll see Ted Gregory right in his face. You can see a West Virginia player, but not even close. They're on their feet at the Carrier Dome. It's third and 29. Kimko needs it all. Look, fires. A great catch inside the 20-yard line. Harvey Smith comes up with another one. Harvey Smith has been unbelievable on the last two catches. In between Jeff Magrum and David Holmes, watch the diving catch by Smith in traffic. Unbelievable. I can't believe David Holmes didn't get his hand on it. Harvey Smith, tremendous concentration. Kimko, like David Copperfield. Smith wide to the left side. Brennan's Bell, top of the screen. Timko fires, looks. Smith dives inside the five. This is the Harvey Smith Show. We'd like to welcome those of you watching Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. An incredible performance by Mike Timko and Harvey Smith. Third and 25. Smith comes up with a 40-yard reception. Third and 29. He comes up with a 37-yard reception. There's no one and it's on now first Smith. and goal inside the five-yard line. The Mountaineers were out of this football game. They were backed up 75 yards from Pater. They trailed by four. A field goal meant absolutely nothing. And now, with 40 seconds left to go, West Virginia has a first and goal at the Syracuse five-yard line. And we go back, David Hum, to that missed field goal by Syracuse with eight and a half minutes left to go. And we talked about how many times a team had an icing field goal, missed it, and the other team came back. Watch Harvey Smith here. This was a diving catch by Smith inside the five to bring us to where we are right now. A key reserve, number 88 is, last year. He's on the receiving end of many Mountaineer passes, but none is crucial, Dave Hum, as the last three here in the last 60 seconds. Harvey Smith, a tremendous fourth quarter, but remember the last series, Robert Drummond, the running back for Syracuse, ran the ball out of bounds rather than getting down and having the clock to stay running. Dick McPherson must be shell-shocked right now. He had this game on ice. It's third and 29. Let's go back for our Oklahoma viewers now and watch this catch. In traffic, double team. All they needed on that play was 29 yards. They got 37. Harvey Smith able to get a tight shot up as his helmet off back at the 15-yard line. The young man out of Monroeville, Pennsylvania, who's had three key catches on this drive. He's majoring in business in West Virginia. Well, he has done some major business here in the last 60 seconds or so. 40 seconds left to go. It would salvage the Mountaineer season. Flood formation wide to the right. Kimsko fires, touchdown! Granis Bell!
Watch Quintus Bell on the right of your screen. Beats, beats Cooper Gardner. Big touchdown. There, there was a little pick play there on the right, right with the motion player. You saw Tom Bray come in motion. Watch the great throw to Quintus Bell. A very important extra point. It's a two-point lead right now. Charlie Bauman can make it three. He does. 13 to 10, West Virginia. Watch the sixth-year coach, Don Nealon, and his reaction as his quarterback, Mike Timko, threaded the needle. Says, okay, you folks at the Aloha Bowl, take that one. Don Nealon, former coach at Bowling Green, wanted to be a professional baseball player. Admired Deut Perry, who was the head coach at Bowling Green, saw games like this one. Saw Deut Perry affecting the lives of young men. Decided instead to be a football coach. Learned his craft under Deut Perry. Then was an assistant with Bo Schembechler. Said those two men have been the most influential on his college coaching career. A great coach at Bowling Green with the Falcons. A very successful coach for the Mountaineers in West Virginia. Four straight bowl appearances. An incredible drive by Timko, 75 yards in seven plays, but he came up with a 37-yard reception on third and 29. He came up with another 29-yard reception on third and 25. All to Mr. Smith. Harvey Smith made three great catches, and then they went out to number one. Grant is Bell on his little slant-in post pattern for the go-ahead score. Scott Swades, who is already the Hartford Insurance most valuable player of the game for Syracuse, is back deep, along with Tom Kane, the young freshman. Bauman would like to keep it away from Swades. Dribbles it on the ground. It's picked up by the upback. That is number 39, Chris Barnes, and Barnes stays inbound. Should have gone out of bounds to stop the clock. 31 seconds left. Now keep in mind the great cannon of McCollin. Clock, of course, stops on the change of possession, but still, had he gone out of bounds, the offense would have had a little bit more time. They need to work it down in the field goal range. And remember, Syracuse has no timeouts left. 31 seconds. They've got a long way to go. Here's McCauley warming up. They've got to get fairly close. From the 36-yard line of Syracuse, McPherson. Looks over the middle. Dancing feet. He's got Seattle. Seattle pulls it in at the 38. First and 10, Syracuse. He beat Dave Lockwood again. Mike Seattle, the senior, 6'4", 217, out of Springfield, Pennsylvania. 23 seconds. They'll respot the chain, and then the clock will start. Now, McCauley's longest career field goal is 51 yards. They need only another 10 or 15 yards, but they need time to get McCauley out. They're out of timeout. Nick Pearson fires. He's got Swades, and Swades cannot hang on at the 20-yard line. Stacy Smith up over the back, and Swades batted the ball down. Watch Scott Swades. He's going to run a post and corner pattern. Here's the throw by Don McPherson. Stacy Smith is going to make a good play, but still a catchable ball by, by Swades. Stacy Smith, a good job. You see Swades make those catches. Not a good job, a great job. He strips Swades of the football. Second and ten. McPherson can run. Fires downfield, and he misfires. It was a misread between the quarterback and the wide receiver. Swades, it was a bad read. I think Swades gave Don McPherson to look like he was going to run deep. He ended up coming back to the ball, and, and McPherson threw the ball over him. Now you've got a problem. Nine seconds left to go. 13-10. There is McPherson, the head coach. There is Don Nealon across the way. Their wives are good friends. Mary Ann Neely, Nealon, Sandra McPherson. They'd rather be shopping than root against their other... McPherson looks for everything, looks for Siano, incomplete with three seconds left. Do you like the play call? No, I didn't like the play call. The, the cornerbacks were off right there. It wasn't bump and run. They've run the out all night by pressing deep. But shouldn't you run a down and out, throw it, 
try to pick up 10 yards and get your place kicker closer for the field goal try. Plus it stops the clock. That's, you really only run that fade with the corners back. They were back that time. They could have run the out. The ball had to be thrown in the end zone. If he catches it inside the 10 and he's down, time is going to run out. This will be a 55-yard field goal try. McCauley's longest is 51 yards. We'll look from the end zone. This is to tie up the football game. It's on its way, and it is no good. Two best friends will meet at midfield, Don Nealon and Dick McPherson. There they are. They were assistants together at the University of Cincinnati. Their wives go shopping together. In fact, the coaches said the wives are probably closer than they are. They talk on the phone, a big long distance bill. Watch McCauley's reaction. Is it long enough? He puts his leg into it. You saw the cannon-like effort, and it is, it is, it is. It is no good. A nervous coach over on the Mountaineer sideline. There you are, folks, a big upset. The Mountaineers came in about a touchdown underdog. There are the two Americans, Timmy Green and Brian Josiak. Final by three, the Mountaineers. Back with more after these messages. The Syracuse Orangemen lost three of nine fumbles in the first half. Two Charlie Bauman field goals for the Mountaineers made it 6 0 at halftime. Don McCauley connected from 41 yards out to slice the deficit in two. Then Don McPherson, a 20 yard pass, put the Orangemen up by four. But then, in the last minute of the game, Mike Timko unloads right there to Granite's Bell, and the Mountaineers take a 13 10 lead. On the game's last play, Don McCauley missed from 55 yards out what would have been. The winning, or make that the tying field goal. Two best friends embrace a good game here at Syracuse. For Dave Hum, I'm Jim Kelly. Let's rejoin Jim Simpson.